It says we are live. So I, Gus and I never know when we actually are live. But I know it's welcome, everyone, to the Grinwell Cup. What is it? Qualifying round breakdown with da, 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 da. Delusions of Grendel and Jenny from Let's Be Nerdy. Yay! Hello. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Look, I have a coffee cup. Actually, has tea. I am obsessed with your coffee cup. I, I'm just like the wonders of technology never cease. Look at that steam coming out. I know. Out the too. steam delights me. Hot the issue is dog. I can't put it down, so I just put my hand down here. <laughs> That's the we've, we've not figured out how to put it down. Yeah. But we have yeah. coffee. Well, just, we have that technology. It's, it's just per like permanently in my hand. So when I gesture like this, just imagine coffee or tea is my preferred beverage flying about all about the place. Uh, so for those of you who don't know, the Grinwell Cup is a March Madness bracket. I'm, I'd be surprised if anyone's here who doesn't know, but just in case, it's a March Madness bracket that happens on the Wheel Takes Twitter, uh, where we do polls to determine at the end the definitive hottest character in the Wheel of Time. And these polls happen every day of March um, until we get our winner. Our winner ascends to the Heroes of the Horny. Um, after that, they are ineligible for future years. So they 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 won, they're winners, and then we determine the next year who the next hero of the horny is going to be. Um, yeah, and this all came, and that de definition of hotness can be whatever you want. Um, you know, whether it's, you know, we have pants feelings to I want to set them on fire the most, all is valid in the Grinwell Cup, um, except for the show actors and that is because while i trust you you specifically obviously i would not <laughs> doubt you you specifically uh i do not trust the broader internet um to not make it weird in mm -hmm. some way whether that be descending into harassment of real people or determine like picking apart the appearances of real people let's not do either of those things obviously I can't control your brains. So if you have show goggly brains, I cannot stop you. Just don't tell me. Anyway. Yeah. Just be cool. <laughs> that's, but that's all I want is for I'm everyone not, to be cool and have a good time. <laughs> These are just regular glasses, Allie. I Every now and then I'll see someone doing much better this around than they have ever done before. And I'm like... What's going on? I may or may not have accidentally somehow voted for Leandrin due to show goggles. I may or may not have happened. <laughs> Listen, is it valid? It's... Yes. Oh, also, er so... Grendel has uh, her daughter. Um, <laughs> so she may be on and off camera. We support mothers on this podcast. So, like, do you boo like if you need to be on if you need to be off if you need to be whatever whatever is good i'm just mm. you know we're getting we're getting tangled going so i can distract her yeah. screen time ah uh, yes what yes. Ah. screen time you know what mm. sometimes screen time is necessary we're not here to mom shame on real take no ever. no mom shaming no we, mom shaming unless <laughs> you're like you know leaving your child unattended in a pool which you know then we'll, we might have some words but like i mean as long that, as they got a pony around the neck i think they're fine right <laughs> around no. the you yeah. see those baby floaties that you can around put on a baby neck? and it just goes around their neck and it's like this four month old who just bobs along with its head in the water anyway i'm feeling those. really sad I have seen those. They're hysterical. I have not. I, I'm shocked the babies actually let this happen. Mm. I mean, you get them in the potato phase when they can't resist. Yeah. They're too, they're too, weak, to <laughs> too weak to fight back. <laughs> but yeah. So tell everybody who you are. Promote your shit. <laughs> What's, where can we find you all if we fall for you during the course of not fall for you, but like love your antics and mm. want to hear more from you specifically. Uh, I'm Jenny. lesbian nerdy. Uh, Jenny, you can find me at lesbian nerdy on YouTube, I guess on Twitter or X or whatever the fuck we're calling it and other platforms, but mostly just YouTube. That's where I am. Love it. Love your videos. Oh, thank you can't watch now my that you videos. can watch some well, more. I've seen clips. <laughs> some, that's true. You can see some of them. I've seen and clips. You can, watch me, you can watch me stream Baldur's Gate really, really badly. I, and I've <laughs> seen you stream Baldur's Gate, and I loved you streaming Baldur's Gate. I was there for you live. 
Yeah. Yeah. I my character's it. really, really hot. She's really hot. <laughs> I didn't mean to make her so hot, but every once in a while is she it, does. Is it Carlac? Like, well, okay, Carlac is yeah. the character I'm romancing, but also oh. my avatar is also really hot. And I didn't do that on purpose. It just like yeah yeah you create yeah. your just own avatar so you like make your own custom avatar mine is also very attractive and yeah. cool um yeah. i spent an unbelievable amount of time on this avatar i spent a like while making, making my want to pick up video games for the it's really first fun it's my, you first have to play. it's my first one baldur's it's game so is, gate is so good I, yeah. I have been obsessively playing it partially mm -hmm. because i'm experiencing fatigue and so i've been so i can't do anything but i can press buttons real good mm -hmm. and yeah. it's the thing about video games that always scares me is i'm not i don't have fast reflexes but that does yeah. not matter in Baldur's Gate. it doesn't all. it doesn't yeah that's what i was worried about too it's like oh i can just take my time and make this decision yes okay exactly okay it's, yeah and there's real a lot of hot people in it that you can romance yeah. Mm. It, yes, I've and, heard of this. Um, mm. Lazelle, I've heard, is a real popular one that everyone seems to be going for these days. Yep. Sure. I told this instead of, instead of Gail. I Gail is my husband. Please leave Gail. I, okay. Alone. So I appreciate all of this because I'm hearing it in the background and I'm hearing names. But every <laughs> time you say Gail, and when you started talking about Gail, I got, came into Hunger this Games. conversation and I was like, what? What has happened to the alley I know and love? <laughs> Where did the Gale slander hour go? And why have we now turned a corner and have decided that we're going to embrace our 14 year old spirit and love up on Gale? No. Then I realized it was Baldur's Hunger Gale. Games it's Gale Baldur's is Gale. dead to me always, but Baldur's Gate Gale is uh, a golden retriever gamer boy who mm. loves books and has a cat. So he does obviously, I he does have a cat as a bisexual did fall for him. Despite right. my best efforts. Yes. I appreciate that. I, I will say that. all of the other uh, companions who are not Carlac, I could not care less about. They they stay here, they talk, and I go, wah, 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 wah. where's Carlac? That's Can what's happening in my brain. Can I tell you something her horrific that Gus did to me recently? I told this on the last right. stream, but I don't care. Hmm. Um, because I'm talking to my friends and you all just happen to be listening. <laughs> so <laughs> here's what happened. I first, I, I came in with a uh, hoe it up attitude to mm, Baldur's Gate because why not? I'm mm. married and I, whatever. Not in Baldur's Gate, you're not. Yeah, in Baldur's yeah, exactly. Gate, I get to live my bisexual freedoms. Mm. And hold on, I'm going to take you out of, well, no, hold on, I can't do that. Never mind. Just my headphones got weird. Speak okay. again. Hello. How are yeah. You? Okay. Now I can hear you. They all they went crackly for a second. But okay. So I was like, hoe it up, have fun, no consequences. And we learned now during Baldur's Gate why I cannot have that mentality. I had because here's what happened. Lazel and I had a thing. Mm -hmm. It was great. We had a good time. Yeah. But I start seeing Gail, and I know that Gail is monogamous in this game because there are some people who are polyamorous yeah, yeah. and some people who are not which is fair which yeah. is fair yeah and i was like i i'm willing to give up lazel for gail because gail and i gail compared me to his cat and it loves books and i'm a sucker for that oh my gosh mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and lazel has maybe some horrific opinions so <laughs> probably need to lock mm. shut that down you know but i mm -hmm. and i can't shut it down later because that's me and i'm leading her on mm. right so I got to shut it down now. The social anxiety that it gave me dumping these pixels was unreal. She's not a person. But yes. I was like, <laughs> like upset because, because I've never really had to like, I've never had like a one night stand and then been like, I don't want to see you again. Like I've never done anything <laughs> like that before. And I was like, you should have got your friend to pass her a note. I truly, if I could have gotten Gus to do it, I would have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Home. And I was like, I need to break this off before like feelings develop, like real, real feelings develop. But mm. her feelings were hurt. And I felt really bad. Yeah. I felt awful. So, okay. Flash forward, like a month later, not even, mm. several weeks, a package arrives for me at the door. 
Now, I don't know if you know, but the voice actors for the show are great and have been like oh, very yeah. involved in mm -hmm. the promo for the show. And it's been really fun to see them and like hear their voices and see them be normal people. So I get a package in the mail. It is a signed photo of Lazelle from the voice <laughs> actor. <laughs> yeah, you can bring it. You can bring it. Look what it says. <laughs> Outstanding. Those of you who can't see, Gail, really disappointing is sick. And is sick <laughs> is what he calls people. But yeah, yeah I was traumatized. <laughs> I was like, I cannot believe that you did this to me. A Anyways, pixel so, fights back. It's, the, pixel yeah. is, the pixel is aware now that I have hmm. chosen someone else. And anyway, it was such a shady thing for my husband to do. And, yes. uh, I it's great though. Will never forgive so him great. for that. <laughs> we'll never forgive him. But anyway, so we're not here to talk about me and the fact that I apparently cannot hoe it up even in a video game. Mm -hmm. Um, we're here to talk about mm. the Grinwell Cup. Yes. Mm -mm. Yeah. Though Baldur's Gate is really good, Grendel, and if you and play, you I would play like it. to know everything about it. Yes, yes, please. Yeah, please. I'm, I'm, I'm picking up on this. When I find free time again, oh Wait, baby, oh. Did baby. you get to promote your stuff, or did oh, I you did it not. get distracted did not. by Baldur's Gate? We, we, uh, I think we all got distracted. We went on okay. this journey with you. Promote your uh, shit, then we'll talk about the first <laughs> poll. <laughs> uh, I'm Delusions of Grendel. You can find me on X. Uh, maybe threads, maybe blues. I can't remember where I am and where I'm not at delusional <laughs> Gren. Um, I am mostly absent these days. I also co-host sometimes a <laughs> podcast called Feather and Mountain, which is a Wheel of Time showcast where we focus on the show from the perspective of a longtime veteran reader and a never reader uh, who is my father. Um, so we have done uh, season two. We haven't released our season two episode eight breakdown uh, simply because I had some real life terrifying and really sad shit blow up on me. And mm -hmm. so we'll re be revisiting that when we do uh, some breakdowns with friends on a rewatch, likely um, after Rings of Power comes out this year. We also have not released our episode eight coverage because of some weird, terrifying medical <laughs> shit. Is episode eight giving us weird, terrifying medical shit? It, it can is we cursed. place the blame Ooh, with, yes. with episode eight? Because I people have been asking us like where it is and everything. I'm like, mm -hmm. I promise you, I feel guilty about it every day. <laughs> <laughs> and it will be coming out. It may take a second because we've got bigger shit happening real, and also life the stuff. Cup is happening. real life stuff yeah but real life stuff does unfortunately uh, uh, trump other stuff yeah and i'm like listen would that the other stuff could trump life stuff that would be sick we would, that would that. Be i thing, would yeah. love if i could just have talked to my body and been like and the, you can't the dead no, fetus within don't. me and just be like hold Hold, please. <laughs> We're not whilst doing this whilst I really dig into this episode. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah. Would that we could do that. Unfortunately, mm. uh, we are people. Dis mm. Despite being on the computer, we uh, we aren't related. pixels. We aren't pixels. I was going to say yeah. yes. Yes. We're related. We aren't <laughs> pixels. We aren't pixels, and uh, sometimes we have shit going on. But yeah. Feather and Mountain is a great podcast. It is. You all absolutely should check it out. Um, you two no, are no surprise. Our longest episode is when Allie and Gus are on. <laughs> that is the case for literally every podcast we've ever been on. Literally every podcast we've ever been on. They're like, we normally go an hour and we're like, bet it's not yeah. going to yeah. like Strap watch it. us destroy all your metrics. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's my, it's not Gus. It's me. Yeah, I know. It's me. I'm I'm at fault. But I just once we start talking, I just have such a good time. Whatever. Yeah. Like, what so this is gonna go to the word. talking. Yeah. I'm trying to think of a word other than fault. Fault implies badness. And I just Ali, you talking is a delight. <laughs> That's you just... you, br you bring out the good in people. You bring mm. out the conversation. It just I needs just... to keep going. I'm like, for some reason, we're reading the Alana series on Hot Nuance. And for some reason I decided today. 
you know what? We're going to tangent today. We're going to talk about how uh, restraint is strength. That you don't always have to, like we talked about that. And then it was like a really long conversation. And then we were like, but we're here to talk about the book. Books, yeah. <laughs> but it was related. Yes. It's related. And I'm like, so I just, I like to talk, I like to talk about stuff and hear people's thoughts. And sometimes mm. we do a really long conversation about shit that like we go off in the woods a little bit, but we find our way back. We yeah. find our way back. I mean, on that topic, if I can tangent just a second, uh, we found out so uh, Allie and I are going to be on a panel together at Jordan. Oh, Con. gee, are you going to put me on blast for how I, I behave today? <laughs> <laughs> like, I mean, it wasn't just you. Again, this is just about but it was a delight. But it, it, was, it was just me for a minute and for then people jumped in for, for a minute so that was... I didn't take over this whole thing. <laughs> So we get we get this. Uh, so we're basically talking about feminism in the wheel of time. And I, I know Jenny has some thoughts. Don't worry, you've been quoted. Uh, sure, I'd love some coffee. Okay. Um, and so, so we get this spreadsheet and all of a sudden, and it's empty. It's just like, you know, like use this for a sounding board of ideas. Within five minutes, five minutes, there are bulleted points of like the good, the bad. And the ugly. The good just has like maybe talking points. All right, listen. And the bad and the ugly are just filling up. Like, and you, <laughs> I locked onto the spreadsheet and you could see in real time it being filled out and the rage that was like emanating from these fingertips. It was like Palpatine yes. in Return of the Jedi. Like unlimited power. Yes, I just like went through the slog, okay? <laughs> yes. But also, Ali, Ali, don't you know it's it's a matriarchy? Sorry, <laughs> I'm moving out of the I way. I get one more out of the way. <laughs> TikTok comment talking about how it's a matriarchy and how Robert Jordan was doing innovate. I lo- this is the problem. I love these books. I'm having a great I time. I just like I can't help. I can't help it. I'm like I gotta I gotta unpack this. I gotta unwrap. Mm. Like I like when I love something, I like of people course. think I don't love it because I like want to think about it and dig it. into it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but to me, that's it fun to be like, more. what's yes. like working here? What do I feel like, you know, I, just, I love that shit. Like getting into mm. the nitty gritty shit is fun for me. And talking about the craft and all that stuff and like the deeper messages that the writers may be trying to get across, mm. maybe accidentally getting across where the like the biases of the right. Because to me, the like yeah. the story is part is like part of a bigger whole. Where it's like, what's happening in society when this is going on? What's happening? Because we're all, it's like this cool feedback loop of like art informing, uh, informing culture, culture informing art, like all this stuff. It makes me excited. And and then people go like, Ali doesn't like these books. And I'm like, it's false. False. Yeah, yeah. I, I would just not have a be lot talking of talking about them this much if I did. That's exactly literally like what. Yeah, books I that I have nothing to it, say yeah. about that I'm indifferent towards, like nothing. Even books I hate, I'm just like I either DNF'd it or oh, yeah. Ooh, I, let's not touch yeah. That. Yeah. I certainly um, wouldn't read eleven books of it if I know <laughs> and a prequel yes. and a prequel. Yes. Yes. Yeah, like I, I wouldn't be talking about the, like I've I've read these books now for 25 years. And let me tell you, when I saw that spreadsheet and you started going, my two, like my fingers too, also exploded across the keyboard <laughs> yeah. with words that needed I, to be said. I appreciated that everyone started jumping in because I thought I was like, it would be fun to like look at it. It's like the good, the bad, and the ugly. Like it's like here's what's working. And I was like, mm-hmm. listen, the good parts I feel like get talked about a lot. So yeah. that's why I was kind of like, yeah, I mean, I mean not by me, but yeah. <laughs> but I was like, you know, I feel like, yeah, like women in power. That's nice to see. Like women with like internal lives is nice to see, you know, things where I'm like, mm. yeah, obviously, you know, we all love these books for a reason. But yeah. then I was like, but I feel like the the things to unpack are the things that are like, because there's always so much like you, you could be like. We like women in power. Like, what else is there to say? Like, we like women yeah. in power. Like, yeah. the, how much nuance can you put in there? Uh, but mm. I was like, but, but you know, some of the other dynamics. So then I was like, the bad is the stuff where I'm like, Ugh, it's not great. But like, I it was the times or whatever, and I'll hand wave mm. it. And then the ugly is like, let's discuss <laughs> <laughs> some of the stuff that yes. is really not my favorite. But so yeah, but I, I'm like, I love these books, and yeah. But but yeah. I don't know how I got here. Oh, I love the books. Uh, but 
Oh, my favorite thing is that I got so ADHD hyper focused that I kept having like multiple ideas at once. So I was like writing it one sentence and then I'd like cut off partway through the sentence to write a different bullet point and then come back to that bullet point. And then just was like bouncing around the whole document. And yeah. James called me out on it. <laughs> it was like, <laughs> finish a thought. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> It was true neurodivergent chaos in that document that it just got excellent. unleashed. I was like completely hyper fixated on this document. And people and like the other people in that document were like, "Does Ali have ADHD?" Or <laughs> I just like I, I I wasn't fully prepared just for the immediacy of the aunt. Like it was like we got an email and then truly within five minutes of receipt of that email, there was like six pages typed. Mm. I, I I really had a dissertation on in yeah. this dog. Like I really, it's my magnum opus. Maybe I really and everybody else contributed. Everybody, I almost yeah, I just I was, was really so inclined to, to say like so we're, we've been given one hour for this, and I was so inclined to change that time frame and just be like, are you sure? Are you sure we're not going to go wheel like, takes like sure? four mm -hmm. four hour debrief into this topic because we should we should. I, I truly am like, this is an hour will not be enough for me to say all that I have to say. And and yeah, I'll be no. like, I have to be cognizant the whole time of the fact that other people are on this panel and need to talk. Like, yeah. But it also, I love every single person on this panel. So I'm freaking psyched be one. because I feel like it's going to be neurodivergent, feminist, wheel of time loving chaos. And I think it's going to yeah. be awesome. Like, I just, I was just like, Here's some stuff I would love to cover if possible. Which, if, if we get around to it. If we get around to it, like let's let's not ignore the spanking. <laughs> <sighs> let's make sure we cover that. Like yes, please. briefly. Some of the stuff, yeah. I I I I, I'm so excited about this topic. I was like, I got the thing and I was like, if there are two things that I love in this world, it's wheel of time and feminism. So I was like, let's go. Let's yeah. go. The so yeah, we're coming to Jordan Con. Buckle up. Yeah. It's going cool. to be wild. It's going to be, it's going to be a feminist time for sure. <laughs> we're going to be femifisting our thoughts. <laughs> <laughs> Manifesto. Did you see me go like, I'm not going to say that, am I? <laughs> you said it. I saw that happen in your brain. That was great. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Speaking of femme fisting, um, the grin woke up. So <laughs> I can't hear it without hearing fisting. <sighs> That's, that's the point. That's yes. that's what I'm doing. That's, that's the point. We're femme. We're femme, we're we're femme fisting, fisting our thoughts I into just, you. Sorry, I'm just. I can do all sorts of things with my fingers now. Wow. We know. <laughs> we know. Yeah. <laughs> dirty, in your case, okay. in your case, yes. pencils are people. I'm realizing. <laughs> that's true. Yes. 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 Oh, Maybe that's why I'm so fucked up. But so Grand World <laughs> Cup qualifying round one. So it's mm. called the Man Witch. Right. Or do you two know who has won these rounds? No, I have not seen the results for any of them. Okay. Mm -hmm. So it's called the Man Witch. And it is Talmadis versus Lan. Okay, if Lan didn't win this one, I quit the fandom. So <laughs> that's, that's just really <laughs> so because I, mean, I feel like I this is the thing. I felt like this was a good matchup because it's two mm. like guys. First of all, the reason why they're paired together is because, well, the brackets, like the reason why it's called the man, which is because they both have man in their names. Of course. Yeah. So I was like, man, man which, um, yeah. but also, I mean, they're both people love Talmanis. They're both snacks. Oh yeah. People uh, love Talmanis. Talmanis is, yeah, he's a short king. Uh, yeah, he's a, he's is he short? I don't know if he's short, but he's definitely he's a Carrie Annan, yes. He's quite weak. Oh, oh he's Carrie Annan. Yeah, of course, yeah. True. Yeah. yeah. He's a short king. He's a short king. He's, mm. I I keep thinking, when I think about, like, his attractiveness, oh, I keep thinking wood. about when he told, when he was, like, trying to comfort Matt, when Matt was having a bad time, and was like, you know, you've got to, like, deal with it and process it and stuff. I was like, ah, oh, 
an emotionally intelligent king Mm -hmm. who's not going to let his friends suffer alone. That's hot. Yeah. Yeah. Very hot. Yeah. I love a man who feels. I do. Who feels feelings. Yeah. And it like has no problem expressing that. And has like that, just like the dry wit, like self-effacing. Doesn't need to talk himself up. He knows his own worth. Like he is hot. But unfortunately, he is paired against the emo poetry king. Yeah. Who's out here ruining vaginas everywhere. And making like that come out of his mouth. And he is like the, you know, the, the, the Kinsey scale, he is him and like Jason Momoa's biceps cool. are like the, like 1% of me that is like, well, men aren't, aren't bad at maybe like that's, <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's not bad. <laughs> like men, I just don't want them anywhere near my vagina, but which like, is valid. that's valid. Yes, yes. But like land talking, there's like, a, I want to put oh. that on your tombstone. <laughs> men aren't bad. <laughs> no, the rest of it. Oh, <laughs> just not. <laughs> I would honestly love to see that tombstone. That would, that would be that kind of remember. iconic. Like I'm like, you know, here's the thing about tombstones. I'm like, don't be boring with it. Like, no. There you know, beloved speech. wife. Ah, uh, stop. Yeah. That's you not know. what I would have wanted. <laughs> there is there's a graveyard behind one of my godmother's homes and. Uh, when I was a child, I used to walk through there and there was like a spate of them, like maybe six or 10 of them where like the, on the tombstone, it just described how they died. Like, it was just really weird. Fell off a horse, like in her, like, it was just like, and I mean, they weren't all graphic, like, but like fell off a horse was one in her sleep was another. It was just like, what a weird, Damn. like, just like how they died. <laughs> Maybe that was like a Vogue thing to do at the time. I I do love how literal it is. It really was very, very literal. I mean, as someone who loves the tea, like very helpful, actually. It has been helpful. (laughs) But I feel like I feel like if I fell off a horse and that's how I died, and Mm. because that's kind of embarrassing. And my friends Mm. put that on my tombstone, I'd be a little bit pissed. Like I would haunt them. I'd be like (laughs) Some business is private, you know, like we don't, <laughs> we don't need to go make it for me. the haunting. Yeah, exactly. Do we don't need to tell everybody my business. Do you know what the Korean king who fell off his horse? This is like a whole, a whole tangent thing, but it's hilarious. Okay. In Korean history, uh, the Koreans, kings and the, the nobility were followed around by these chroniclers and they were, their job was to just write everything down to record it for history. And there was this uh, king who fell off a horse and like when he realized the chroniclers were there and were like, he was like, don't write that down. And so the, he made them erase it, but then they stuck away and wrote it down anyway. And they recorded, yes, they, they recorded yes, they recorded the date. So every year on the anniversary of what had happened, there's like a, a spate of memes that go around, like never forget that King, what's his name, fell off his horse today in such and such. <laughs> I... <laughs> I love that so much. Yeah, it's great. It's such a good great. story. Also, yeah. I love this tombstone. That's so sweet. Yes. But speaking of people yeah. who probably wouldn't fall off okay. their horse. Probably not. Lane, oh. no. Lane no, I love, I love that you gave us that because I think we all need needed to know that that man fell mm. off his horse because obviously he wanted everyone to know about it. And yes. So, <laughs> sometimes the cover up is funnier than the actual incident. Yes, if he just fallen off his horse, it, it, nobody would care. But yeah, a masculinity, toxic masculinity, really re- like affects us. Some of the best it echoes across the timeline. <laughs> yeah, have just been the result of some toxic masculinity. Yes. yes. So the man, which I mean, Lan, there were many comments that were like, he's got a stone face. That matters not at all to me. Uh, uh, what it says no. to me is like jaw. Because I'm like, you know who's like uh, described yeah. as good looking is Dane Bornhold. Like, and look what he's done with it. Like, it's what mm. you do with the with the face you have. You know, it's oh, like absolutely. how that face behaves in the wild. That's the true hotness, right? Yeah. yeah. Oh, and the to vulnerability. Me. Like, I, I, I just, yeah. I, I, I knew. I mean, coming into this, you're just, you're never going to have a chance against Lan because, sorry, no. Eye of the World in the Blight 
you're you're going to compare anything anything that anyone else says to that moment come to that moment oh yes God. i will hate the man emotionally vulnerable yes me. i will love him Ugh. if he makes you smile like that is the one of the like like that's not toxic or, masculinity that is the man saying like and of course there's other reasons behind it we can get into the self sacrificing hmm. i don't want to what i want to hmm. focus on is the fact that his her needs and her wants and what's best for her will always come first for him and that is beautiful and i yes. really yeah. really love it and not to yes. mention i have you have cultivated flower like flowers where oh, there's there only was, dust and stones so like stone. jesus yes. christ yes. jesus christ like mm -hmm. if you don't marry that man one of my biggest don't regrets that, man, that we never saw I, rand in the show mm -hmm. reacting to that out of nowhere yeah. It, that like, was it's hilarious. Truly, it's truly my favorite part of the whole book is just Rand so oblivious. He doesn't understand anything else because like he's got main character energy. He doesn't mm. realize that Nynaeve and Lan are like head over heels for each other until he's literally slapped in the face with it. And yeah. then he hears like this beautiful sonnet and he's just like these men are so <laughs> tragically uncurious about their friends and their friends' relationships. And I just yeah. really don't understand it. Like Perrin and Gaul uh, uh, and uh, Chiad just like, it was like, what? And I go, my mm. man, where have you been? Like Rand with yeah. Nine even uh, in land. I'm like, where have you? Well, I guess that one did kind of come out of nowhere. I'll be honest about that one. I mean, we're but... also in Rand's perspective. So the question exactly. is like, did yes. it, did it exactly. actually come out of nowhere or did exactly. it just come it, out of nowhere for also, Rand? To you. To be, well, to, also to be fair, it was like, what, a month? And Dineve was proposing after a month. Yeah, but they've been on the I, road every day together. Yeah. And like, ooh, he saw I, I, her value. He sees value in women and yes. doesn't need to justify or qualify he, it. Just like yeah, not even a little bit. And like that, is, that is the hottest thing about Lan. Yeah. It's just it like her he sees that made him a go. powerful female. And instead of being threatened, instead of needing to talk himself up, all he does is offer support. And he's not a man who's going to stand in front of a woman. He's a man who will yeah. stand beside a woman to mm, protect yes. her. And I mm, yes. love he will it. Back Hot. her up. Hot. He will and back her up. Unfortunately, Tall Mayonnaise, my favorite, favorite short king. I've just I I haven't seen him around enough women to really know like his the energy that he gives off. I want to say it's good. I like him and Brigida, mm -hmm. um, but I don't I don't know it as well as I know Lan. And so he's hot in a different way. I feel like Tall Tall Mayo and I would bro down hoe down and yeah, have great yeah. nights out. Platonic bestie for sure. Mm -hmm. Lan, heart melting. Does yeah. Tomanis even do poetry? I don't know. I could see it. Like yes, he he, a he's got Your an diary. emotional he intelligence to me <laughs> in that one scene with Matt. But I guess you really and this is my kind of my thing about straight men. I don't really I, I want to see them around women before I make a decision. <laughs> Yeah, especially like women that they're that's interested fair, in. Right? That's fair. Especially both women that they're not interested in and women that they are interested. I was about to say for me it's more obviously because you know lesbian but straight men around women they're not interested in is where I see the I was like yes. okay that's a woman you yes. don't want to have sex with and you are treating her like a human good. Like that's Lana yeah. Moraine like say yeah. no more. Say yeah. no more. Beautiful yeah. partnership yeah. and I refuse like they I just I don't ever want to see sexual tension between them and I love it. And you're never mm -hmm. going to hear from Lan that men and women can't be friends. Like when a man no. says that to me, that's a red flag. Oh, absolutely. Yep. Absolutely. Yeah. They are so platonic. It's wild. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, thank you. Okay. Here's something we can add to the feminist list. Yep. There are men yes. and women who have platonic friendships. Yes. Beautiful platonic Love friendships. that. Yes. Because yes. it's true. You can have platonic friendships between the sexes. I don't care what, what Harry, Harry met Sally, what they say. Like, yeah. I do love that movie, but I think that the thesis is garbage. The mess it, yeah. Well, the, that's yeah, giving off the 90s vibe, right? Like, yeah. it was, you know, so mm -hmm. I can excuse it. And which, which, I mean, it could be that Jordan was writing ahead of his time for that, or that he simply yeah. has female friends. Enter Maria. Maria. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I'm like, okay, here we go. Let's see. And mm -hmm. I feel like, I feel like even still, I struggle to find like platonic male female friendships that are not like family members. Well, yeah. or that people don't literature. start like shipping immediately and just like let people like have some powerful representation of like beautiful platonic friendships. Yeah. I'm like, 
I feel like I, my best friend since I was five is a dude. Mm. Granted, he's gay, so he has no interest in me whatsoever. But, you know, mm. I didn't know five. that for a big portion of it. <laughs> he, neither did he probably, but yes. Yeah, yeah, I exactly. Do. But so, t- so Land did win this one. With 67% of the vote. Ooh, you know what? I'm proud of Tall Man. Yeah, me too. I am proud because, you know, mm. other or otherwise, like in other years, perhaps, if you were not as far along, perhaps uh, Land would have won it by like a land slide. <laughs> <laughs> like a good old nine, 90%, but 67 is pretty good. Oh, yeah, I feel mm. like, you know, and I, I think, you know, I Land tends to do well. In the Grinwell mm. Cup, I think you yeah, see yeah. his bars are really. His bars are so good. His bars are so good. His bars They're are so, so good. good. They're really mm-hmm. good. So, mm-hmm. you know, I, I have to, I, but, in my with my parody song, I used some of his lines, and like uh, people didn't recognize them from the song. They were all like, "Jenny, this is a beautiful line. I can't believe you wrote like." I didn't write that. No, that was land. That was land. That was land. Yeah. <laughs> the fact that he's like got his mission and stuff and he still finds the time to write some really good poetry. I mean, good for him. Yeah. Honestly. Yeah. <laughs> Amazing. AI could yeah. never. Anyway. No. Nope. <laughs> I'm going to add Randall back in. Yeah. There we go. Nope. So, yeah. <laughs> I, I, yeah. Land, land did well. But I thought it was a fun matchup because I was like, these are two mm. men that we never see together, but do give off similar vibes. Some, I'd, some like, oh, absolutely. I'd like yeah, them yeah. to have like they, they could have some good some good chemistry i feel mm. like the two of them and rourke would be really fun together <gasps> yes. oh that's a trio that would be yes. really fun because i love i want to see rourke mm. and land together i mm-hmm. think their relationship i'm not even doing it anyway whatever <laughs> i love their relationship together but i I think that three of them would be really fun mm. all yeah. right so next is glow up to throw down now Grendel, I think you're going to have some feelings to express. But so we've got Min and Liana. Those women who have had gl- mm-hmm. different glow ups in the books. Yeah. Both beloved characters. Mm-hmm. Let's talk about Liana first, because I feel like Min's going to take up a lot of combo. Yeah. I mean, I feel like the. F- first year of the Grinwell Cup I I think I made my thoughts on men pretty clear (laughs) and at at this point in the series where you are is um I think you understand those I think when we first started you were just at fires of heaven right and I was like what what is going on yeah I could not I was like men's wearing pants like what what Mm -hmm. what's the deal I'm getting Mm -hmm. lamp emojis what's going on yeah um so I mean you you've read enough now. So I'm actually now at this point more curious on your perspective of men than my own and mm. Jenny's. Hold on. P. Um come along. <laughs> uh but Leanna, I mean, she is low key one of my most favorite humans uh in the series. I love her endlessly. I love how she maintains her intelligence and she embraces a part of herself that the Aes Sedai took from her. Mm -hmm. Um, She comes back to her roots. She really focuses on that. And uh, she does it for herself, not just for men. She does it because she enjoys it. And it's just such Mm -hmm. a powerful reclamation of who she was. Um, And like the, the adoption to the to the green Aja from the blue and just like really like Mm. actually truly being herself is admirable. I think, especially now that I'm, I'm hitting my mid thirties really comfortable with who I am. It's just like really great to see older women because Leanne is in her forties still, you know, willing to change, make those adjustments, like continue to learn Mm. and to grow and to, and to develop as people. And that is something added to the list that, RJ, I mean, like, yes, she looks like a 20 year old. I'm going to pretend that's Mm -hmm. not fair and just focus on the fact that she is a woman with like a great arc, a great story in her 40s. um, That's not just being a mom. That's not just being someone's girlfriend or wife. She is like a human with her own agency and um, and is brilliant and beautiful. And like I, yeah, she takes it for me like, no, no, no no questions in this for so many reasons but um just the representation i think of of badass women who 
Yeah. Let's of copy and paste change. that into the, <laughs> uh, into the, doc. the feminist doc. Actually, now I'm kind of mm-hmm. like, maybe we start the panel by going around and saying who our like favorite female character from the books is. Hmm. You know, just like, you yeah, know, yeah. who who sticks with us the most. Yeah. Uh, I mean, obviously, be fun. I've got different opinions about who the real fave is. But well, listen. <laughs> she is high up there. <laughs> listen, the Forsaken are very capable. The women Forsaken are very capable. And yes, I, I was about them. to say, qualify that. Yeah, piece. yeah. I'm like, <laughs> listen, I, I mean, the female Forsaken just do it different. And that's yes. where we're at. But you agreed about Liana. I think what I love in a glow up storyline is when the woman is doing it for herself. It's why one of my favorite movies is my big fat Greek wedding. Cause like, yes, she has a love interest, but that glow up is for her, like not for him, you know, like he notices her before the glow up. Cause Mm, he goes, Oh, you're that waitress. It's not like, who are you? I don't know Mm. you. It's like, Oh, you're that waitress. Yeah. And like, yeah, she has a glow up, but the glow up is like a direct, like manifestation of her becoming more self-actualized mm. and finding an identity separate from what her parents want from her, want from her, for her. And I, so mm. to me, like that's the only glow up movie, one of the only glow up movies, Miss Congeniality is up there too, but she does that for the job. Right. But I okay. wish, I wish Liana, cause it's now occurring to me that Liana had kind of part of her culture taken away when she was mm-hmm. put in the tower, which I go, yeah. whoa. We're having a school that's beating the culture out of you. Load it. Mm-hmm. Thought, think just that provoked a thought. And then also, I wish she could have been the Towers Aaron Brockovich. Okay. You know? <laughs> yeah, like yeah. It feels like they missed an opportunity to have an Aaron Brockovich on their side. Yeah. And yeah. isn't that a powerful thing? It's not thing. too late. It's not too late. She is, And you know what? It's not too late. When you're 40, you can be sexy. And I love mm-hmm. that that's true. Yeah. Like, that, because I feel like so often you hear like past 30, past 35, like people put these weird markers. I mean, if you're Leo, it's past 25, right? Yeah. That's it. That's the end. <laughs> that's the end of women being hot. The I... worst part is when you go through movies and you see just like the age difference between like women and, and their yeah. sons. And it's like seven to eight years sometimes. Yeah, with like fully grown sons. So, I have yeah. anyway. I have many feelings about that, and none mm-hmm. of them are good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I mean, to me, yeah, having a woman who is in her forties who is hot is like mm-hmm. shouldn't be revolutionary, but kind of is. You know, I the bar is in hell frequently. So, I mean, this sails over the bar. Mm-hmm. She's just also hot. Like she ties yeah. everyone in knots. I mean, and I freaking love that for her. I mean, she's hot. Liana's hot. Period. Yeah. No questions. Yeah. And, oh, and I mean, yeah, we can get into her loyalty and stuff. Like I love that mm-hmm. for her. She is like she is a woman supporting woman. Like mm-hmm. she is the definition of like if 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 she has your back, you will be set for life. Like she is mm-hmm. just. A straight shooter. I I love love the crap out of her. Um, so many great attributes. I just wish we had more POVs from her. The fact that she also, to my knowledge, to what I remember, never like blames Swan for what happened. Yeah, no. She like takes she the doesn't. autonomy, her decision. Mm-hmm. Yeah, which she could have. She could have. Yeah. Right. She easily could have been like, if if it weren't for you, la da da da. But yeah. she's like, no, this Last is our situation. Half-full. Resilience is hot always. Mm-hmm. Right, it's time to reinvent myself. Yeah, yeah. I love her so much. I just, oh, I forgot how much I love her. Now no, I need I to reread these books. That she rejected, like, because usually the towers thing is like, go and have a bunch of babies and find a purpose. Right. And hopefully yeah, you won't just, kill yourself. Yeah, yeah. And she was like, I'm not going to do any of that. I'm going to actually find a different cool purpose. Because obviously, mm. being a parent is like a great purpose. Oh, yeah. But it's often yeah, forced on women. And mm-hmm. that it was like looked at as like a solution to being suicidal. It's like there's a lot to unpack there, but yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, ugh. but add that uh, to the list. yeah, oh, add that to the list. Yeah, add that to the list. But um, yeah, I mean, I feel like that she rejected that and was like, "I'm going to forge my own path." God, that's hot. Forging Sink. your own path is hot. Yeah, um, love her. There's a reason people love. You, the you can go your own way song 
<laughs> Even yeah. though they don't realize that it's just like a passive aggressive breakup song. But <laughs> it's also inspiring because it's true. She goes her yeah. own way and that's amazing. And then we have Min. Yeah. Here's yeah. the thing about Min. You hit me with your Min thoughts. Yeah, please. It's complicated. Mm. Yeah. Are you into the the zone? Most of the defenders of men, which come into it with their own headcanon, right? Like, here's what's mm -hmm. happening off page. Here's everything she's doing off page. Here's what you don't see. And here's what, like, here's her real pursuits. Here's her intelligence. Here's everything off page. Um, my rage and aggression with men comes down to who she was on page before she got dickmatized. I loved mm -hmm. Min. I loved I her. Loved yeah. men. She was funny. She was quirky. She didn't always talk about men. She was very much women supporting women. She was her own person. She had her own identity. The worst argument I've heard is that she had no purpose and she was just <sighs> a bartender. Just a bartender. Or just, yeah. just a stable hand. And I was like, but that was what she wanted. She like, wanted. you don't need a job, Shane. Like, she wanted this. <laughs> she enjoyed her life. She loved her life. She wasn't looking for anything different. Let's not say that it wasn't enough. She wasn't who she was designed to be because of all these things. So I've heard those arguments, but I'm telling like straight up I, I loved ooh. Min. Her weapons were mm -hmm. effective. Then she gets stigmatized. Her knives effectively become useless in every scenario. They're taken yep. from her. She is uh put on the back burner. She becomes a lap dog. We literally lose, we lose we lose her voice literally. story. We lose her yeah. POV. We lose yeah. her her wit. We lose her charm. We lose her energy that had things that were more than more than just men. We miss her female friendships. We miss mm -hmm. everything. And that that's what I can't forgive. That's why I can never vote men because I men, if you talk to me about Eye of the World to Shadow Rising, hot. 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 Yeah. yeah. Would it easily be. Oh, a very, contender yeah. for me in Top the Grunwald yeah. character. I yeah. feel like for me, it's you nailed it. You completely nailed it. There, there's another thing I want to add where I just felt like the way in which she wooed. Well, first of all, I, I am, yeah. I'm still like stuck on the fact that she had no purpose. Like, why does a woman even need? Yeah, like the fact. Thank you. I like wow, like that. Yeah. That blows my mind as a. Mm -hmm. comment as a defense yeah just yeah. just the idea that like a woman has no purpose that woman had no purpose until she was with a man that's mm -hmm. wild to me whatever as if she can't fucking see the goddamn future yeah she's literally that's so raven we're gonna say that's so raven has no purpose fuck off anyway but first mm -hmm. that that i'm like just stuck on that for a second yeah. i needed to process that but second her behavior towards Rand when she's like wooing him. It's weird. Was and like creepy. so creepy. Mm -hmm. Was so like reverse those roles. Reverse I mean, those roles and he's in no. jail. Like it's it's bad. She's literally like, trying to give him a boner in a business meeting. I, embarrassing. Like, like imagine Elaine doing? trying to reclaim her throne and Rand yeah. comes in and sits on her lap and drapes himself all around her and grinds on her no. while she's trying to like are you kidding me yeah. no are you kidding me? right meow get out get out but yeah ridiculous get out it's literally yeah. the apocalypse and you're trying to give this man a boner during an apocalypse meeting fuck yeah. off get out of here but like that's not the girl i fell in love with that's not the no. girl i like and mm -hmm. the so the, there's the cringe factor which i can't get past yeah. Where it's just like cringe, 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 cringe. Because I was literally physically recoiling while yes. this was happening. And I'm like, yes. we're supposed to believe that a woman in her like mid to late 20s is acting this way? Yeah. Absolutely. No. She's acting like a horny teenager. Exactly. It's so like, even if we go past the whole, this is purely sexual harassment. It's so cringe. Like it's cringe in a way that is, no, no. Yeah, exactly. Thank you. I'm always just yes. a farmer. Thank you. Like. But yeah, it's just like, ugh. and and I feel like all of us, I think the reason why she's so upsetting to women in particular is there is this weird societal expectation. I saw these men claim that women have no hobbies recently. What? I know. And okay. I was just like. Okay. 
Okay. Uh, the 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 top consumers of movies are women. The top consumers of books are women. The top consumers of all art is women. The top people who do crafts, women. I feel like the that's people a, who play sports, yeah, yeah, more men. I, that is I, like the one I hobby. I even put that at like 50 50. But like, yeah, I, what, what I, do I know? But I was gonna, like, it, I think it's one of those things where men make the definitions and they're like, it's, it's the same thing with like men going, women are too emotional. And then they go, oh, yeah, but I get angry, but angry doesn't count. Angry doesn't count as emotion. Yeah. Like men are going, hobbies. Well, that's sports. That, yeah. All these other things are not hobbies because we don't do them. Like they're, they're making the definitions and then it's, being it's all made up. weird about it. Yeah. Stupid. It's, and then they shit on any hobbies that women have, right? So then yeah. it makes you ashamed to have those hobbies yeah, exactly. as a woman. And so then you like try to reject your femininity. And I think that is like where, that's one of the parts where like, I think it's, I don't want to say triggering because like, but it is, it is triggering it is. to women because it's oh, like, yeah. you yeah. watch your friends and you, and I have experienced this too, where you get into a relationship and all of a sudden, like your whole personality is like on the back burner mm -hmm. because this or their whole personality is on the back burner, their hobbies, their interests, their stuff, because like the man takes the precedent in the relationship. Yeah. And it's like what the man wants to do, they're doing and and all this stuff where it's like you're forced to kind of like and expected to relinquish part of your identity to make your man happy. And if not, you're going to mm -hmm. die alone. Right. It is so interesting to me with what I do for a living that what happens to women after divorce, um, like women who have typically been more of a homemaker or who have put their career a little bit on pause uh, to make sure that things are taken care of post-divorce, they're happier, they have more free time, um, mm -hmm. and they're able to prioritize themselves for the first time. So typically, after divorce, women are significantly happier than men. And it is men who end up needing marriage. So it is a it's an institution that typically favors and benefits men as opposed to women, which is why in today's society, more and more women are choosing either not to get married or are choosing to reframe and restructure what their marriage looks like. Um, yeah. which I applaud. And that's we've, I think that's also to pick better men. And then the minute we're like, yeah. we want better men, they're like, but not like that though. You're at fault yeah. for the reason there's so many unmarried men. And it's like, well, yeah. then they can be fucking better. It's called mm -hmm. capitalism. And for once, it's going to benefit us. Like supply Today and is the demand. Day. Supply <laughs> and demand, motherfucker. If the, if the supply sucks and there's no demand, then make a better supply. Be make a better yeah. supply. Thank you. Yes. Jesus. Damn it. Damn it. That. That's how yeah. it works. Like, yes. no one is going to be forced to marry you. We don't live in that society anymore. So you better yep. be fucking working on yourself. Otherwise, you'll die alone. And we're yep. very much fine with it. Because here's the thing. There are studies that show that unmarried women live longer than married women. And are happier, yeah. And yeah. are happier. Yeah. Uh, there's a reason for that. Yeah. It's because some of these men are trash. Like, yeah. <laughs> it's no offense. Actually, offense. Offense. Offense, offense intended. <laughs> and this is a, somebody who has, like, the best husband in the world. And he comes in and he's like, men fucking suck. Yeah. And he could because he's also there when women aren't around and getting to hear that mm. shit. Like the shit they say when we're not there. And it's like, it's crazy. Yeah. So yeah, I, I feel like it's this societal expectation that we're going to like make ourselves less to make men happy. Yes. Right. That, that is just so hard yeah. with men because yeah. that's what and, it yeah, feels I was gonna like. Say, yeah. And that's, I mean, like I'm always going to be triggered by men because I started reading these books when I was 12 and she broke my heart when I was 13 and yeah. she was my role model. And then she took it from me. And she basically said like everything that you thought was cool, a woman with her own ambition, her own drive, her own money, her own like agenda, her own talent. Just kidding. Fuck that. It becomes yeah. subsumed into a man's identity and it shattered me. And so for like to this day, it's been like, Again, like I said, 25 years since I picked these books up and I will never not be triggered by men. Uh, the did. amount of times that I, and I don't know if this is an experience that you had, the amount of times that I have heard from older adults growing up, like, uh, no man will ever love you if blank, like whatever mm. it was that I was doing, like being loud, yeah. being, you know, having, having a messy room, all this shit where they're like, no man will ever love you if you're like this. And 
Yeah, it's because women from childhood, yeah. right, are conditioned to become wives. And it's yeah. like, that is the expectation. That is what is put on you. You're supposed to make yourself less. That's bullshit. It's mm -hmm. bullshit. I am the same as I've always been. And I have found actually a better partner because I didn't compromise who I am for him. Yeah. And the other thing that bothers me is I'm like more like they warn you a lot of the time as a woman when you are diagnosed with cancer and you're married that your husband may leave you. Yeah. It's like it's, it's shocking statistic it's, how it often that happens. And like it's like 2% or some shit for women. It's like none, yeah. almost yeah. none leave their spouse on there. Thank you, Kwasi. That's very sweet. I, I'm okay. Mm. But my grandmother sucks. Anyway, so. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's, it's yeah. a whole thing. Yeah, my mom was whole thing. Like, you're not ready for, she would not say no man will ever love you. Her phrase was, you won't be ready for marriage. You're yeah. not ready for marriage if you can't do that. It was like, well, yeah, but you know, it's like the same. I remember same my feeling. mom went over to my home and she was like, Jenny, a child would not be safe here. And I was like, mom, I don't have kids. Like, what do you mean? Like, I don't so, have children. But the, yeah. still, the children would not be safe. Still, like, somehow. You are not ready to have children in this house. Like, I am also not, I don't have children in this house. What yeah. the you fuck want, are you talking you want about? A, you see one escaping from me presently? Like, did I miss something? <laughs> yeah. So while like, yeah. I do, because yeah. I have had some people say, well, it feels like a, a an interpretation of like someone caretaking for a dying spouse right or a dying partner and i'm like yeah okay i see that i see a world in which that is an interpretation that's totally valid and mm. i'm like but <sighs> while that is a sacrifice i don't think that is the sacrifice of your whole being do you know what i mean yeah. like you're still you and it yeah. feels like her glow up if we're going to call it that is for Rand. Yeah, she doesn't even like it. She's constantly annoyed by like the ringlets and the, the stuff she's wearing. And, yeah. And yeah. and I'm just like, it's not for you. So it's not empowering no, if it's that, not for you. The thing with Min's for me that triggers me with Min is the fandom reaction to her. Like at, from a certain type of fan, to be fair. Best but girl. It, it, yes. And it's just that I like <sighs> if I if I look at her life in the context of the whole, like what goes beyond the books. I can see this like section where she's all digmatized as a season in her life. And we all have seasons in our life where we do things that perhaps are not. Perhaps and many of us have been digmatized. And like, yes, <laughs> yeah, it's, I think it's the thing. Or, 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 or clipmatized. Or clipmatized. You know, so, <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. I, who among us, I think that's why she's so triggering is many of us have been in this situation. Yeah. And but so the issue, it's upsetting. The issue that bothers me is that there's a certain amount of fandom that's like, oh, when she's digmatized, that's the best. I'm like, what? why yeah. like and that's what triggers me with she's, yeah. the, she's the only one who gives uh everything up and sacrifices for rand the and then she's in this girl. fandom who love that she gave up herself to support him mm -hmm. um and perhaps that is what is most triggering now that i am in my 30s and in a partnership where it is truly equal where we both give and take so that the other person has the reason I'm on like daughter duty tonight is my partner's out playing hockey like we trade off we win yeah. we like we vibe with each other and that is I think really nice the yeah. problem in the books is that we don't ever see Rand giving to men yeah yes yeah, yeah. and the thing is it's like I have I, I have no problem with the caretaking, even though that does feel very traditionally woman. Yeah. And, you know, I mean, there's nothing wrong with a woman who's nurturing or caretaking or what have you. And there's nothing wrong with women making sacrifices for their partner. That's called being in a relationship. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yes. my God. Spencer's killing me. Yeah. But so <laughs> I, there's nothing wrong with that, per se. <laughs> Look, Grend Grendel's caretaking right now. <laughs> right, <laughs> right now. <laughs> I, and Call it's me beautiful. Man. And it's beautiful, but it's like, yes. But it's like, there has to be some give and take, even even <laughs> when your partner, like, as someone who's been very sick lately, I feel horribly guilty, right? <laughs> that Gus is having to take on a lot of mental mm. and physical load in our house. 
So I am trying actively, constantly to figure out ways to support him back in ways that honor the the place that I'm at, which is, you know, sometimes I'm not able to do everything that I need to do, but maybe I can like do one dish, you know, and it's like a one dish day. And I just want, where's Rand's one dish for men? Yeah. Yeah. Literally one dish. I'm a asking for one dish. One spoon. Yeah. One ounce of checking in with her. Or like even, you know, even for her to check in with like another girlfriend, like I would love yeah. for to have been a conversation and maybe, you know, maybe this is something the show will change where, you know, we get to see the fatigue that it puts men, like we don't just see her being a, a vessel for mm -hmm. brand to drain, which yes. is what we see, yeah. we, how we yes. see them using women, Nynaeve at the cleansing. Um, mm -hmm. Oh, women, yes. Uh, stop it. Okay, go roll around. <laughs> 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 toddlers we don't, we don't get to see <laughs> parenting is so easy if you're wondering um we don't, we don't get to see men just like have like the Bechdel test basically mm, after mm. fires of heaven we don't ever uh, yeah. see her past nope. it it's just she every every ounce of her is consumed and subsumed by her relationship and she loses We have yes. To okay. <laughs> okay. Well, we'll cliffhanger that. Yes, yes. But yeah, so. I agree. I just, I think it's one of those things too where, yeah, there's this expectation of women as caretakers where it's like they're happy mm -hmm. yeah. 24 hours a day. So easy just, caretaking for someone else who's going yeah. through really difficult things. And I'm just like, that is not my experience. I, I, that's not to say like, oh, she resents him or anything like that. But it's draining no, but to have a partner that needs you. Yes. I think it's a missed opportunity to showcase her humanness in the caretaking role too. Mm -hmm. As I feel like the books don't make it seem like it's a lot. It's just like, no, no, she's just perfectly happy and content in this role. Like there's no, the, you're, because we're not getting her POV. It just We're feels just like seeing, she's yeah. Rand's comfort lay. Yes. Yeah. And it's like. exactly. And they're like, and she reads books. And I'm like, not enough. Yeah. If, if that's all she's doing. Like, so, yeah. I mean, this like. This has become the men's slander hour. We could, like, I could go up. <laughs> like, it's just like, it's just that overwhelming. Like, I know you talked about, you know, growing up. Like, I, I was very fortunate to grow up in a, in a household with. Uh, people around me who never once suggested the kind of wife I should be, uh, oh. the expectations that men should have of me or not to be myself or to, or to lessen myself to build men up. So like, you know, my father, I've talked to like I run podcasts with the guy. Uh, mm. He's a good egg. My mom yeah. also like top tier. Um, but <sighs> I was going somewhere with this. Stop yelling for me. Um, I think, <sighs> With men, it's it's like when you have those parental figures in your life, the, the worst feeling that you have is just like crushing disappointment. And now that I'm like in the parent, like I can't even imagine just being disappointed in my own kid the way that like I'm disappointed in men. Like men hurt me and she disappointed me. And for that, it's like I just I can't find hotness in someone who has so shattered my expectations yeah i just yeah i just want more for her and yeah you know there's nothing wrong with being someone's girlfriend or wife obviously i'm a wife and i love being a wife and that's a, a part of my identity but it is not my whole identity mm -hmm. and i didn't have to give up anything for that part of my identity it was a it was only additive yeah i was just gonna say yeah yeah, yeah it only enhanced my life but the life that i was already building for myself Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. not you know and and we get to take take different calls and you know it yeah that being said i understand why some people find men hot i do it's not to say like if you voted for men right obviously we're like yeah. you're bad for voting <laughs> for men no like you I have mean, set feminism back 100 years i get that she wears <laughs> pants and like pants are hot tight pants are hot and if you're like and oftentimes in the grinwell cup we're going through it like bird box. oh yep that's how i read the books just in general 
just yeah. in general. So I doesn't get it. just randomly hit people. That, that that doesn't happen. No. And I probably should have started this that way. You did like compliment sandwich it. But yeah, like, you know, I men men at the beginning is someone I would have absolutely voted for. Mm -hmm. It's just the way in which she moves forward in the books and the occasional fandom reaction to her that is questionable. Not all the fandom reaction to her is questionable, no. but some. No. Some is questionable. Why is she best mm -hmm. girl when she's the girl that gives everything up? Like that always is like, mm -hmm. is it because you like her because she seems like a friend, or do you like her because she gave up her entire identity and that's what you want people to do? Yeah, 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 yeah for you. So mm -hmm. I get it. I get it. She wears pants. She's sassy. She reads, <laughs> and she throws knives. That is hot. Those are mm -hmm. objectively hot things. And like. If we are bird boxing some of the behavior of the characters, we can bird box the behavior of men. But it's relevant yeah. for why people didn't vote for her. Yeah. Right. So it's like, you know, it's all relevant. Yeah. And we, we talk about the things that might be why people didn't vote for them. So mm -hmm. we, we're going to talk about men. Men's yeah. complicated. She's very complicated. And she we're only on round two. Time. Yes. <laughs> but who won this one? Who won this who one? Do you think? Who do you think? I think Liana. I think Liana won. Please, Liana. Liana Please, did win. Liana, Liana yeah! does win this fandom. Uh, okay. People love Liana. And so Liana has progressed to the quarterfinals. Okay. Now we're at number three. Break my crown. These oh two have different. Fayil uh, and Morgays. Fayil is from Saldea, literally the broken crown. And Morgays had a broken crown. Okay, so, you want to know my reasoning for who I voted for this one? This one was, was a tight race, by the way. I know. This one was this, back and forth all day. This one was so hard for me. I had to just sit down and like fully, okay, Jenny, which one, like, if you had to, if you had to, if you had to with either of them, who would you? I was like, I can't. I was too young. Morgays. Like that was literally my thing. I really is here very young, canonically. Yeah. Yes, Morgays yeah. is appropriate for me, so that's how I voted for Morgays. So you're not into either of them. You you not had to make yourself I, decide. I had yeah, I had to make myself decide. It's uh, it was a like I don't have pants feelings for either. Of them. I I think they're actually both really interesting characters. I I find them both really interesting characters. But uh, Fail no pants feelings for so many reasons. So huh. many reasons. Really, he has um, she has uh. She has a lot of maturing and growing to do. I actually think, I legitimately think that like give Fayil 10 years fully. Pat's feelings, all she would be a competent, she's a competent leader. She's and therapy. Fight, like, yeah, yeah. 10 years therapy. Definitely like, all therapy. Of that, she would be like, she's just going to be ruling the two rivers and being super competent while like parents off in the stable Practicing weaponizing competence. Hammering something. Yes, exactly. Hammering something. Like she's going to be amazing, yeah. but not yet. And Morgays, for me, I just, I just want her to go to therapy for other reasons. Please, just, I don't, I just, I just want her in therapy for so many reasons. Oh. She needs help and comforting and love and no pants feelings for me because I don't think she needs to be in a relationship right now. No, she definitely <laughs> needs time to herself. Yeah. Yes. And she's not emotionally available or ready no. for a relationship right now. She needs to do deep internal work. Yes. Yes. Yeah. I said about more gays. I was like, the thing about more gays is I don't find her hot because I'm worried about her. Yes. So worried. So, so worried. worried about her <laughs> in a way where it's like, it's not like, you know, I can be worried about Gus, right? But yeah, yeah. but like worried about her in a way where I'm like, I'm worried about her in a way where I'm like, I need to protect her yeah. from the world, including myself. Myself yeah. is in that <laughs> yeah. group. Yeah. Like everyone needs to, everyone. like there needs to be a bubble around her for everyone. And yes, she's like that friend that you have where you're like, every time I see her, it, there's like a new big problem. Mm-hmm. And you're like, oh, what's it gonna be now? Like, yeah. and sometimes they can be the arbiter of their own destruction, and sometimes they're just really unfortunate. And you're just like, damn, it just feels like you never catch a break. Yeah, that that to me is more gays. It's just mm -hmm. like, fuck, you know. Mm, you've got a lot. Uh -huh. 
of trauma to unpack. And I don't feel yeah. like, yeah, I could be a part of that journey in a, <laughs> in a romantic no, way. No, it would be yeah. so unhealthy. The so last thing bad. you need is to add romance to this, like, yeah. cluster fuck brain fuck badness mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah she yeah, needs I, she needs some time she needs time which is why i don't like talent for i'm like she does not need you right now this is this is yes, not the, the amount the not many the reasons i don't like talent for yeah Morgay's needs a minute off. yeah like <laughs> and my thing about Margay's that annoys me is like people are constantly slut shaming her and i'm like god forbid mm -hmm. a single mom has two boyfriends <laughs> Two. I guess three, but like obviously Robin doesn't count. So like he, she had two yeah, boyfriends. No. I have it on yeah. the list, by the way. I have it on the mm. on the document that yes, we're yes. about Borgay's being slut shaved. And like God forbid she has boyfriends. Yeah. Obviously yeah. she's hot because she pulls. Like she definitely <laughs> she's yeah. definitely got people lining up for she, her. Mm -hmm. She's a but beauty. She's definitely gorgeous, but she's like that tragic gal who's like gorgeous, but like God, she just gets like. Fucking it just, it just and I, people are horrible to her. I think oh, I come at it yeah. from like a slightly yeah. different lens in that like Morgaze is always gonna take this for me. And like, yes, she is sure. a work in <laughs> progress. She uh definitely needs therapy. She is but I see a lot of myself in her in like unflattering ways, like a little suppress to success action happens. Um, and like, she has this wild resilience to her. That is oh, a strength, yes. That's a strength true. that truly, I don't know if anyone else in the books rivals, like for her to have gone, oh, yeah. she, gone through what she went through, not once, but twice. Mm -hmm. Um, she's strong. She's she is girl. woman. Sorry. She is, inc she is incredible. And, mm -hmm. and when you really stop and think about even how she won the crown yeah. during the, the succession, like before the books took place, she was so young and so self-assured, like she was able to get everyone on her side and she's just, she is incredible. She is a little bit defined by the men who enter her life. And that I think is more a failing of RJ than it is of mm -hmm. our girl. Um, and I just, I mean, in this bracket, it's more about like, who would I, who would be my mentor? Like, who would I have the best like wine nights with? Who would I learn mm -hmm. from? Who would be like, to me, that's hot is like, who would, who would be the person I could turn to in times of crises and, and, and like want to emulate myself. And I think more gaze is it for me. Like she's, she's yeah. truly, um, Yep, you're waving at yourself. <laughs> Pretty cool. Uh, yeah, she's just, she, she's an icon. She's an icon. And like, I, I don't think she gets enough appreciation or love by the other characters. Like even Elaine. Um, yeah. uh, we, G Galad. Okay. Um, like the, the one who gives her the most amount of respect, I think, is Galad. Yeah. Mm. Who's like, he's, yeah. she's not even his mom. So maybe that's part of it, right? Is like, he has more of an objective lens towards her and he can see just how incredible she is. And for her to have taken uh, Galad in like that and, and just raised like such an incredible, like knowing he wasn't going to be Prince of the Sword um, or First Prince and knowing that he, but like making making a niche for him, making a home for him in their family after Taryn Gale's death, like, yeah. God, she's cool. I just love her so much. She's the mom who stepped up. Yeah. Right? The stepmom is the mom who stepped up. Yeah. I, I love that. Yeah. Yeah, you know, that's true. There's something to be said for her resilience, for her, mm -hmm. like, grace under pressure. I mean, she really is... She's an amazing force of nature, and I do get very emotional when uh, Galad faces Emma, Eamon Valda down for her. I wish it could have been her. Mm. You know? Yeah. But I get, you know, the one thing that drives me a little batty is I guess Gus told me that uh, I guess RJ said in his notes somewhere that um, the way oh. the reason Khaled is the way that he is is because more gays is sleeping around and that like screwed him up. And I'm just like, no, no. <laughs> but the more gays is the single mom who works two jobs, who loves her kids, who never stops like that yeah. is her. So yeah, yeah that I, is hot. I don't, 
I don't think that actually ended up in the books, but that was part of RJ's notes originally. I know. It's yeah. just my least favorite thing. I <laughs> oh, no. My least favorite is when he talks about uh, Galena and Thurava and the topping quite thoroughly. That is my least favorite thing. I thought in it was the world. bottoming quite thoroughly. <laughs> bottom I don't know. I don't care. It's He does not understand lesbian sex. That is just where I just like, what? Do you not know what? 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 No. You you research blacksmithing so much that you can write like a ten page thing, but you couldn't talk to a lesbian. <laughs> like, oh, well, I feel the same way sometimes. Like, oh, you couldn't talk to a woman. Yeah, about that, <laughs> like the Elaine Tom thing. I was just like, nope, no, serious, never <laughs> once, nope, 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 nope never, nope, nope. not even never. a little bit, nope, <laughs> nope, never. Uh, yeah. Fail. Mm. So she and Para need extensive couples, extensive counseling. couples counseling. I think she has like misunderstood everything that works about her parents' relationship. Cause I do think Dira and Davram are like end game. Like they're, they're they oh, yeah, yeah. respect the shit out of each other. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I love a man who's obsessed with his wife. I do. I do. <laughs> it's, I'm a sucker for it. I, you know, I just, I think you should un unapologetically love your spouse. And I mm -hmm. love seeing men unapologetically love their spouses. I think Fahil completely misunderstands that. Yep. And is not always the pinnacle of emotional health. And she's definitely resorts to relationship abuse, abuse, spousal abuse. Yeah. Yep. Put it mildly. Which yep. is not hard. Mildly. We no. will say that it is not hot. It is not even a little bit hot. No. But if we are looking at it with the bird box, which mm -hmm. we are doing, right? And because uh, Fayil, extensive therapy is needed on that woman. Mm -hmm. Extensive. We need to just like unpack that so much. But I can't help but go back to the Battle of Two Rivers. Yeah. I can't help it. God. It's mm -hmm. so when we're talking it's about so strong women doing what needs mm -hmm. to be fucking done. Yeah. God, that moment where she's riding up ahead of that whole army. Mm hmm. Because I love it's a man, a man who will, who worships their wife. And I love a woman who's going to do what it fucking takes when the chips yeah. are down. Love yeah. that shit. Yeah. And she's doing what it fucking takes. And she's in a way that's like got so much agency. And I will say, she does not sacrifice an ounce of who she is for no. Perrin. Not a, maybe, yeah, yeah. maybe in a bad way. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah. I will also say some of her the, the her issues are because she's being unintentionally gaslit by her husband, constantly sniffing her, and so he's constantly reacting to things that she doesn't know he's reacting God. to. If people react so, to my like uh, every emotion and my yes. judgment of them, I would be so ruined. It, like it does as far as she's concerned she's like i'm just sitting here acting like normal and suddenly he's screaming about how he's, he's not, not screaming barely in, yeah and i'm like Who? which like before <laughs> that was an intrusive thought and now it's a real thought yes exactly. now we're really thinking that you did that as you've yes. said before like yeah. now we're suspicious of you Perrin, and like there's no he gives her no context no i love uh, she's hot when she's running the two rivers yeah oh. God, yeah. we love competence. She's competent. Yeah. And her emotional availability for Perrin when it counts, especially when his family passes away. Yeah, it's very, that's hot. That, that's scene, hot. that scene breaks me every time. Every yeah. time I read it and she just gives him permission to cry yeah. and like lets him fall apart with her there mm -hmm. in the same, and like gives him the safe harbor, gives him the safe space. Like, yeah, it's a good I. I, I I do love Fayil. I love that's, her. Yeah, yeah, that's Robert Jordan at his her. best. I think one of his yeah. best. Like that scene, because to me, that's what marriage really is. Mm -hmm. Is it's like really giving your partner space to be who they are and what they need in that moment. It's like being present with somebody else. Um, yeah. like when, like marriage is affected by life, right? That's what's mm -hmm. hard about marriage. I don't really particularly think being married is to Gus is hard, like, because he's great and whatever. Like, yeah, we occasionally mm -hmm. have a conflict, but like, it, uh, whatever, right? But mm -hmm. like life is hard, which affects mm -hmm. your marriage, right? And I feel like the thing, 
it's but but that those can sometimes be some of the best moments in your marriage too is like how the other person shows up for you mm -hmm. in those times of like crisis where it's like i don't have to go through this alone sorry i'm getting like weirdly emotional right now but like that you don't have to go through that alone yeah. um that they're there yeah. and they're like present with you i mean that's such a powerful thing to have mm -hmm. in a partner and i think is what you know everyone hopes to find in a partner yeah. Uh, and so that to me is like, I get why they're still together. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I want them to go to a lot of therapy because I think they're too yeah. young. Yes. That's the other thing. I was going to bring it up, actually. I, I've read this somewhere. Can tell me in chat whether this is right or wrong, but that RJ initially wrote Fayil to be 15 and then was like, oh, wait, no, I'm getting them married. So he changed that. But he'd already sort of established her personality. And so Which, that's her personality. Reading it, like that makes sense. Yeah. That, that makes sense. Yeah. 15 yeah. Year old. And so good writing, I guess, of a 15 year old. But yeah. yeah. because of that, I don't think that she or Perrin is a, are emotionally mature enough to be married. I think you do yeah. have to, like, you can be theoretically, right? People make it work. People are in the comments all the time of stuff being like, I was 19 when I got married and it's like the best marriage. Ever. Cool. Like, I think the average 19 year old is not emotionally mature enough to be married. Some mm. might be, but yeah. like if your brain is not fully developed yet, which yeah. neither of theirs has. No. Nope, and would it nope, shock nope. you to learn that the highest rate of divorce occurs in people who get married before they are 25? No. Not it does not shock bit. me. Not even a little bit. No. Everyone think back to who you were dating at 19. Like, <laughs> It's just, granted, Gus showed up when I was 20. So like, you know, but, yeah. you know, I think we're, we're kind of freaks. We're kind of exceptions to that rule. And so well, and we didn't get and married changed and like, yeah, and we didn't get married. At 20. We got married at 28. Yeah. So different. You let um, your brain settle. Yeah. Well, cause I, that was very important to me as a child of divorce. Mm -hmm. So it's like our brains at least need to be fully developed before we <laughs> get married. Yeah. For some reason, I fixated on 27. I was like, 27 is the perfect age to get married if I'm going to get married yes. to someone I've been dating since college. Right. You know, I was like, 27, seven years. That feels like good a good age. amount of time. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but then the pandemic happened and I got married at 28 instead. And I was like, okay, cool. Whatever. Yeah. We roll with the punches. But yeah, I. there are so many moments where Fayil is hot. And then so many moments where I'm like, girl. Yeah, I could not put up with that. Nope. If, if someone be if my spouse behaved that way to me, gone, done. Like, Again, uh, like there's no excuse for putting your hands on a spouse. Yeah, just like take me out of the series, bring me back in 10, 15 years, and I'm sh and she's perfect. I think like she's a perfect character that I would be in love with. Yeah, but right now she's just like, okay, yeah. you gotta let I gotta as using your phrase, I'm, I want to let Fayil cook a bit. I just want her to cook. <laughs> I it's voted just... for Fayil because of Battle of Two Rivers because I was that was genuinely like was so clutch of her that I yeah. can't ignore it. Obviously, not the I put it like this with the seventeen yeah, yeah. thing, but because I'm not a freaking creep. But uh, yeah, I could see why it was close because it was an exciting round. Mm. Do you got? Do you all? I... You all don't know who won. No idea. I like. I'm gonna hope it's my girl because I hope. I hope that I, she, she gets needs her a moment. Win. She, she, she needs does. A win. She truly does. Come on. We just give her this. <laughs> Unfortunately, she did not oh, get her did. win. How uh, close this crown too? One with fifty point two percent of the vote. So it was very Ooh, close. That's really close. Like, it was really tied really pretty much all day. I think it ended wow. up being a factor of three votes. Damn. I should have gone to my alt account. Yeah, three votes decided that vote. Which yeah. your vote that matters in the Grinwell Cup. It yes. does. Yes. Uh all right, round four. I was shocked about this one. I didn't think this would go this. I didn't think Fayil and Morgays would go the way that it did. And I didn't think okay. that this one would go the way that it did. It's Logan, who one? was once oh, okay. considered to be the Dragon Reborn, and mm -hmm. then Gaul. Oh. 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 Well, well, I think it's gotta be Gaul. I'm no master of the deck, but it's got to be Gaul. Yeah. Better call yeah, Gaul. Better, I was better about to say, Gaul. better call Gaul. You better call Gaul. All right. 
I thought because Logan has done it incredibly well in the past, mm, right? Yes. Like I think he beat Rand in oh. a round, yeah, a few years ago. People mm. love the emo boy. They do. But you're now at the point where I was just about to say. I think. Yeah, I think it, it part it, part of it reflects where you are in the books, and people are remembering because yeah. where you are, like, oh yeah, no, he gets real creepy. He gets real creepy. The thing about the Grinwell Cup is, I noticed like because people don't spoil me. Like I've not mm. been spoiled by the Grinwell Cup, which shout out to everybody for not doing that to me. Mm. But I I noticed rumblings. Right. Yeah. I noticed rumblings like there's like implications and things like that. And people are like, I don't vote for him because reasons. You know what I mean? And I'm like, reasons. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Interesting. You know, so I definitely read into how these votes shake out for sure. Mm -hmm. um, with with Loghain. Yeah. We're at the Tovine section, which sometimes I do wonder if like the sections we're on sometimes influence the vote. Not to like be wheel take centric or anything but sometimes no, i do wonder your cup and like people are listening yeah, yeah. to your podcast and voting on it from your discord too right exactly. like you're yeah, driving yeah, traffic yeah. there like i'm sure there's some some people who maybe haven't discovered wheel takes who are now discovering them but a lot of it is based on like what you and gus are dissecting and the fact is is like let's be real if barrel lane didn't win it last year she probably would not have been on a good trajectory this year. Yeah. I don't think so. Yeah, yeah, because she she really falls off a cliff lately. Um, yeah. And again, yeah. I've I my theory about it is she's never gotten a guy to make her come before, mm -hmm. and all of a sudden she overhears Perrin and Fayil having a good time. Is my head oh. cannon, and I'm like, this is the only, the way only this one. Makes sense. <laughs> yes. and she's like, oh, there's only the one, one man. man can do this for me that I know can do this for me. And that's yeah. why she hyper fixates on him so much because I'm like, it, makes, it, it literally makes no sense. Otherwise and all the justifications I've, I've had people throw justifications at me and they all that like, makes sense. No, Does this one make sense? Is this, this, a really head cannon? this one makes sense. This one, yeah. the other ones are like, she needs to be close to the dragon. Matt. Matt, not, Matt is too much like too her. much what like me. That's well, a she's dumb already, reason. but That's at this a point, <laughs> and at this point, she's already with Rand. Like Rand has yeah. already elevated exactly. her. He, he doesn't. She doesn't need to be close to him. She knows. Like it doesn't make any sense. Your your reason. Sorry, gesturing with my mind because I'm very very passionate. No, please. Your reason makes sense. Your reason makes sense because otherwise, I, it's, it's the only thing I can think of. So is I'm like she thinks he's her only chance at an orgasm. It yes. must be it. <laughs> <laughs> yes, <laughs> because I don't understand. She's gorgeous. She could have anybody. She doesn't yeah. need to pursue a married man. Absolutely not. And yes, there are some women like that, but like not women the Aiel would respect. Yeah, exactly. that's it. Like the Aiel love her. They love, love her. They As love we her. I, like she's I their love daughter her. to them. And I'm like, like they be, they basically love her more than a Gwen. Like mm. uh, so, I'm like, and she's competent. She's a survivor. She's powerful. Now we're suddenly talking about Berlaine, who's not even in the cup because she's in the hair of the horny. <laughs> but I'm like, there's nothing about that. But I guess we we were talking about Fayil, so it's relevant. Yeah, yeah. Because Fayil's behavior around Berlaine is also something that kind of drags her down a little bit. Yes, but I always feel that's unfair because uh, Berlaine is intentionally poking the bear. Like, right. Berlaine is not doing it accidentally and oh whoops upset Fahil she's like look Fahil look at my boobies at your husband like that's but none of it makes sense because I'm like uh, no. she could have anybody she could yeah. have anybody and she's going for Perrin like of I love people. Perrin but like do we yeah <laughs> I know you don't I know you don't when he's at his best <laughs> battle of two yeah. rivers Perrin yes current Perrin no but <laughs> okay. I get it <laughs> I get it. We're having a party. <laughs> yes. Okay. But yeah, that's how Bear Lane feels when she thinks that she has a chance at an orgasm. But right. So that, that's got to be it, right? Like, I, that's the only thing that makes sense. It's the Someone only buy thing. Buy her a vibrator. Of. Like, she just needs a vibrator. Like, that's truly solve so many problems. Truly. To like, total, give her that red tangent. rod. Yes. Um, yeah. One of my girlfriends, she had kids when she was quite young. So she's. Uh, a few years older than me but her daughter is now 15 sexually active and the best thing that my girlfriend did for her daughter was go out and buy her a vibrator and said listen 15 year old boys don't know what they're doing 
or how to please you. And it is imperative that you know how to do this for yourself so you can tell them what you need. And I was like, if that isn't parenthood, like where was Barrelaine's mother? Not to for mention, her? not yeah. to mention, uh, you know, on that subject that it might prevent you from, uh, you know, uh, hooking up with somebody who you might regret hooking up with, right? Like it, when you have something yeah. potentially better at home. Yeah. I'm just saying. Yeah. yeah. Like, Yeah. You, know, you but, don't always need to go out for dinner. So where was Barrelaine's mother is what we're asking. We're asking yeah. many questions about Barrelaine. So and many, so why, many questions. why parent? And so, but that, I mean, it does come down to Logan, right? So like Logan with his. Yeah. With I love this. His consent mm. stuff is now where Barrelaine is with the consent stuff. And yes. it's just not yeah. hot. It's just not hot. And not I hot know it's not hot. And. The fact that he's sleeping with them, oh, yeah, it's just such yeah. an HR nightmare. It is. I, I and a HR nightmares aren't hot as a no. trait. Like it's because here's the thing. Here's the thing for for Grendel versus Logan in this. We're being asked to root for Logan. Mm -hmm. Like Grendel has the villain fucker thing going on, where yep. it's like you know. But she also doesn't sleep with them. No. no. Like, she doesn't. She's not interested. No. People think she does all of these things, and she's very deliberate in her POVs to be like, this isn't what gets me off. Like, I want you to think it is, but, like, yeah, that ain't Because I it. want people to not take me seriously. But, yeah. I like, I truly, truly, in my heart of hearts, I actually don't think that she finds it hot or, or attractive to go to, like, sleep with someone who's under her compulsion. Well, and that makes sense, because where's the challenge? Like, where's the, yeah. you know, I mean, at that point, like, it's like... No, yeah. she like burned to the shadow because people let her down and disappointed her. Like she's not gonna like she she knows how to get off. Like if there's one thing I'm convinced about Grendel <laughs> is that she knows how to use a vibrator. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. She's yeah. fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah like I, it doesn't Yeah. I, I feel like there's a difference there because it's like Loghain, we're being asked to root for him and he's doing yeah. very unrootable things where we're oh, like yeah. But, but do you not see that, like, sleeping with someone who is beholden to you? And listen, we can get into the whole Aes Sedai ward or PR nightmare that, you know, mm -hmm. that I, I feel like we're, like, one second away from a scandal on that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean. Mm, oh, yeah. We're bloom, bloom, bloom. bloom. Yeah. <laughs> but because I, I realized what I was saying as I was saying it I was like oh yeah, yeah. there is actually that happens but yeah mm. I, it's the it's the kissing to bond them with like the weird orgasm with, with the orgasm weird yeah. and I'm like was there no other way he's like this is the way we figured out how to do this and I'm like was there no other it. way it alarms me because they bond their wives do they do that to their wives that's why it, that's why they do it this way is because they learned the how to do it on their wives but their bond has compulsion like tied in with mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. Com yeah, like compelling your wife. I, again, add it to the list. Like, why, why? Oh, no, we have to add this one to the list. Why aren't they being bonded back? Yes. Why aren't they being bonded back? It's, yeah. It's uh, so, so the uh, wives are under their control, but not vice versa? Yeah. Um. Mm mm. But also, yeah, the fact that he's like, I have to do this. And, I, and people are like, oh, he saved their lives. Let it out. I'm like, that's that's all well and good. Yeah. But now he's sleeping with one of them. Yeah. And that's a problem. It's no different than in the Shido camp. Women were sleeping with men there to find protection. Yeah. yeah. Like, it's exactly not awesome. And I feel like a good man would be like, you don't need to be sleeping with me for my protection. Yeah. We don't need to be doing that. And yeah. I'm not going to sleep with someone who feels like they have to sleep with me for my protection. Mm -hmm. That's what a good man does. A good man, right, is like we're in a bad power imbalance, and I we feel should not sleep about together. This. Yeah. yeah, I'm like it's because because it's not just the fact that she's bonded him; it's the fact that she's his prisoner. Yes. Yep. Yeah, it's all uh... and it's it's so interesting to me. And I'll just like brief tangent. So in my in my work, I, there is a power imbalance, right? Like people hire me, mm -hmm. I give them advice. They listen to my advice. Yeah. That's kind of a powerful position to be in. 
I will tell you, there is nothing hot or attractive about my clients. You could be objectively the most beautiful person in the world, and I would find you repulsive because <laughs> I don't find that power mm-hmm. imbalance attractive. It it's, really yeah. gives me an ick. Yeah. I, I don't find it sexual. It like I get the heebie jeebies when I think about it. That being said, there are a number, a number of men in my profession who have slept with their female clients who are in similar positions of power and imbalance uh, and all of that stuff. And so I think there is something and like, I don't know because none of us here are men. I don't know Mm -hmm. what it is, nor are we men who are raised in the nineties. Is there something attractive? I mean, let's look at like the Harvey Weinstein of it all. Is there something attractive about that power imbalance? Like, cause I I don't see it. And I've asked many women about this. Like if there is something attractive about a power, a a power imbalance. And so far I've got no from women, but from men, it's a little bit more mixed. So I Mm -hmm. I do like the stuff Mm -hmm. with Morel. I'm like, no, I don't know if I buy it. That's no. a hard no. I don't know if yeah. I buy it. I That's don't know. A hard no. I feel for like me. this is men writing women. I, yeah. I feel like on that one, it was like, why don't we compound your trauma with more yeah. trauma? With more trauma, yeah. Let's just tr- continue to traumatize you for some mm. and call it helping. Absolutely yeah. fucking not. That one was that's a no. But um, you know, I mean, adults are adults sometimes you meet your a lot of people meet their spouse or their partner at work right mm-hmm. Lo- like yeah. lots like a wild statistic amount yeah. meet their partners at like work or because of work so like mm-hmm. you know we'd be silly to be like oh that just never like that's a no right because obviously yeah, yeah. it happens you only meet so many people in your life and most of them are work people so like yes you know <laughs> shit happens right it doesn't mean that all work relationships are scuzzy it's Mm. just like and like listen the eyes that i word a thing i think it is an hr problem much like hooking up with your coworker is an hr problem but like Mm. you know if they're two consenting adults shit happens right and like you could fall in love and they got into that relationship with a a random land aside willingly Mm. right because it's not okay Right. And so if they fall in love in that situation, likely it's fine and they've consented to it. Right. And that's great. In this particular instance, they are his prisoners and they are bonded to him and they are like potentially needing him for protection. It's a no go. That's not, I don't think consent is even possible in such a situation because. I think yeah. it's not. Yeah, I think yeah. it's really not. So, you know, just like at nope. the Shido camp, I don't think, yeah. I think Roland is one of the biggest creeps I've ever read in my life. Yeah. And I, I cannot believe that some like people Roland. think he's a good guy, which like, yeah. whatever. Think your thoughts. I just, I think he's one of the biggest red flags I've ever seen in my life. Yeah. And it freaks me out how mm-hmm. he behaves toward Fayo. Mm-hmm. So yeah, uh, versus Gaul. Lonely and problematic. I was like completely. He jumps really high. He, he's a great friend to Paris. He's a great friend. Great I'm friend. literally. I'm trying to think if there's anything problematic about Gaul. He no. sometimes tells jokes about the maidens, but I don't think that's. But sad. they give it back to him. Like, yeah, it's not like, sexist. It's a respect, it's like, like tit for tat. Yeah, he's it's funny. a respect thing. He's funny. <laughs> he's, uh, you know, he does respect. The only thing is that he does want. She had to give up the spear for him, right? But, okay, but that's that's, like, that's, a, cultural his, that's a cultural thing. thing. Yeah, that's a that's a problem with the IO culture. Yeah, not specifically with Gaul. Which again, it it is Robert who is wrong on that yes. one. Like I it just don't agree yes. that the women who are fighting have to give up the spear while the men get well, to have families have, and spears. Yeah. That's bullshit. Yeah. It's that's bullshit, bullshit entirely. And in the feminist uh, panel, we will definitely discuss that as well. But oh, yes. yeah, Gaul <laughs> otherwise is like largely unproblematic, just a good friend and does respect Chiad's thing where she's like, I, I don't know. I don't really want to yeah. do this without Bane. And like, yeah, that sucks for him, but he doesn't throw a tantrum about it or go like, the- why doesn't she like me? I'm such a nice guy like Talonvor does. Yeah. I got the nastiest comment I think I've ever gotten on my video about the Aiel, just like my my issues with them as a culture. I I, I like the Aiel characters individually, I, and I think the culture is actually very interesting. It's just if you plopped me down in the world and said which culture do you want to live in, the Aiel would be the bottom of my list. 
I don't want to live there, <laughs> like not even a little bit. But the comment was like, it was, I don't remember everything it said, but it was at one point it was like, and I hope you feel bad about yourself for having these thoughts. Like it was just like, I hope you feel bad. You're like, I don't. <laughs> I hope I hope you take this personally and I hope it makes you, hope you think like, all right. That's, like, that's so much. I, I occasionally, I kind of love commenting back to people who do stuff like that, where I just go like, yeah. that's a lot of energy to greet me with on a Wednesday. <laughs> <laughs> or I'll just respond, K. Like, <laughs> yeah, it's just K. K. Or, oh God, it was, uh, somebody left me a comment. Their name was Nuanced Neil. Mm. On, on, uh, the, and he left me a comment that I just wrote back. That wasn't very nuanced of you, Neil. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> it's like my favorite thing to do now is just like like joke about it anyway so yeah because sometimes people are wild and like it's just too much emotion these yeah. are books like fucking relax seriously so, yes. yeah I, gall oh somebody did comment that they were allowed to be in a relationship but not married i still think that's bullshit in that culture yeah, yeah. and like yeah, yeah it, it is, is bullshit yeah. that he's like give up the spear for me because i want to be married but like people are allowed to want to be married that's you allowed are, yeah. like yes no, Marriage, and the idea, marriage is beneficial. And the reason for that, like the reason that is the rule in IEO culture is the idea is if they, if she has kids, she can't be a soldier anymore. Why? Why? That's why bullshit. does she have to be? Why can't he give mm. up his spirit to take, mm. like, why, or why do they alternate? Like, it's a, it's such bullshit. It's unfair. Yeah. It, it's it feels unfair. anti-woman in a very real way to me. Very just, real way. Very real way. Yeah. I'd like, and yeah, I mean, he's playing into that culturally but i mean mm -hmm. they have divergent interests in what they want their relationship to be couples break yeah. up because of that right yeah that happens yeah. like it's not to say what you want out of a relationship is not toxic right it's no. it's how they go about saying what they yeah, want yeah. in a relationship that is toxic and yes it is objectively toxic that she would have to give up the spear but to me it's like no different than saying to a spouse like hey i want i have to move for a job a, a partner saying mm -hmm. i have to move for a job that means you would have to find a new job, but you love your job. Yeah. Like the culture yeah. that that exists is, is creating this the, limitation. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Not necessarily Gaul. If Gaul were then like really awful about it, mm -hmm. then Gaul would be then a major would, red yeah. flag. But to me, it's just like the guy was expressing what he wanted out of their relationship. Yes. They diverged as to yeah. what they wanted. And he has and he hasn't examined his culture, like which most people don't. Most people don't go, hey, wait a minute this thing that is an accepted truth in my society, maybe I should think about it. Like, that's just not a thing that most people every day in their lives go about. Like, I don't know. I'm do trying to think of examples. Like, yeah, you know, when I can't- It is hot when they do though. <laughs> it is really hot. But Objectively like, the, hot is, when they do. This is not a serious one, but it was one of those things that when I came to Korea and I, I went into the classroom and there was a roll of toilet paper on the desk. I was like, what's that? Like, oh, if a child has a runny nose. I'm like, yeah, why do we have separate things? Like it's just tissue. Why do we have like a whole separate thing for like blowing your nose and wiping your ass? It's the same thing. Like it is just... the same thing. It is weird, right? Like, I yeah. guess I guess tissues sometimes have like like lotions oh, yeah. on them or whatever, so your nose doesn't get irritated. Yeah, but like, but, like at the end of the day, tissue is yeah. also like the right size, so you're not wasting I guess. paper. Like there's there's reasons for it. I get it. You can um, customize your toilet paper use. So you can totally. I have, yeah. to, I have to run this one upstairs. Uh, do, okay. I don't know if you were hearing upstairs. I was uh, on upstairs repeat. Before, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, so she's saying upstairs. So I'm going to run her up to bed. And mm. if you guys are still going, I will pop back on. We will be because we're only on round four and Perfect. we have a couple more rounds to go. So okay. Okay. I expect this will be about. We'll try to go faster. Minutes. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I shall return. Oh, but yeah, I, I wanted to mm. comment on this too. Um, mm. Yeah, the the narrative. We love Robert Jordan. We love Robert mm -hmm. Jordan's works. Please don't attack me in the comments. Um, and if you do, I will respond with K. But so, <laughs> and it will not affect my day at all. But no. so, <laughs> I will think it's funny and I will read it out loud to Gus in a funny voice. That is what yes. happens when you leave me a mean comment. Like, yes, I just want to say too, if, if you are that person who was like, I hope you feel bad about this, whatever comment, that was what happened was like me showing it to my friend be like, yeah, we all thought it was really funny. <laughs> So yeah, uh, so just know that uh, if you are yeah. going to leave me a mean comment about any of the content of today. But so um, 
yeah, I feel like, and this was not a mean comment. I'm not talking about you, Phil. Yeah. It says you, you're being great. Um, mm -hmm. Totally true. And I think, yeah, I think for me, my, my issue is not actually with gall in this situation. Yes. Yeah. My issue is with uh, the author chose to do these particular choices. And I think the author does believe that she owes him. Or she's being stubborn. She's being unreasonably she's being, stubborn. Yeah. Unreasonable. Yeah. And, and yeah. yes. So like you picking up the narrative feels a certain way. I agree. Yeah. I think the narrative definitely presents it that way. Yeah. Gall to me does not act that way, but at least from what I remember, granted, I read this, like read the, a lot of that like a while ago. So mm -hmm. I could also be wrong. And, and I, you know, I, this is, I think, a legitimate issue to take with Gall. I do. I yeah. think it's a legitimate thing to feel like nah, the kind of lowers him on the hotness scale for me. And that's totally mm -hmm. fair. Like all of the reasons are fair. I think, yeah. except for like their show actor is hot. And then don't tell me that you picked because of that. Because they're all hot. And I just, yeah, I don't trust any of you. I, I, you specifically who's watching that I'm pointing to, you I trust. No one else. No one else. Um, no one else. Uh, the, the one person ruins it for everybody. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But so, yeah. yeah. So shall we get to the results since we've yeah, dissected I'm, them? I, I think it would be gall, but I'm. It is gall. I and okay, I was okay. shocked. I actually thought Loghain would get this because he has like a simple plan energy to him that I thought mm. maybe appeals. Mm, I can see that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah, yeah. I thought there was a potential that he appeals in the similar way that Lan appeals, where they're just yeah. kind of broody men. And we yeah. do love broody men. Oh, because yeah. As long as they're broody about you. Because this is the thing. If they're broody but not about you, if they're just in the corner writing their poetry and like are like, oh, like my music is all that's important mm. to me. That's not hot because then you're like third wheeling, whatever it is that they're right. Right. You know, broody yeah, about it, like, if you're like 15 and like, he's like the, you know, one grade above you, I could see that being hot, you know? Yeah. yeah. Like, but yeah, he's got a an emo an adult, energy an adult person. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I'm no. like, I don't have patience for that. You know, <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't have patience for this. Um, no. Okay. Next one is how do you like your eggs in the morning? And oh, okay. Is, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm sorry that this is going so long. If we need to cut, we can cut. But I'm having I'm fun. Okay. So if you're still I'm having okay. fun, yeah, then yeah. we'll we'll keep going. But it's a Gwen Alvere versus Eggy Annan. Good eggs. Good eggs. Both Good of eggs. Them. Both of them. Yeah. I am going to go hard in on Eggy Annan. I, love I hope her. you she's will. One of my, yeah. She's one of my favorites in the books. I just, she is, she's like, has one of the, I think she has in my mind, probably the most complete arc. Uh, like she just, she grows and changes in her, like it's, you see, like you actually see her. She does the thing that we were talking about with Gaul where she is examines. She's deconstructing. Yes. Yes. She's deconstructing. Like, Wait, this is fucked up. This is uh, fucked up. Yeah. And as someone who has done their fair share of deconstructing and watched other people do their fair share of deconstructing, it's yeah. hard. Yes. You it's lose hard. friends, you lose family, like people yeah. don't like you anymore. Like you lose yep. a pretty much your community. In this case, your entire culture. Culture. Gone. Yeah. 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 For what is ultimately the right thing. But like yeah. sometimes doing the right thing is really fucking hard. Really, really, really hard. Yeah. And really. I mean, they it. talk about this in the show, right? Like mm -hmm. how hard doing the right thing is. And Eggy on yeah. exemplifies that to a T. And yeah. somebody who is has that. I'm sorry, Jenny, I just jumped, but like, I also, no. I voted for Aguiana and I'm really passionate yeah. about it. And I think she should have done better in this poll because I, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Be, yeah. sorry, Jenny, take it away about the deconstruction, but well, no, hard to agree. These, these, have, these are my feelings. I, I totally agree. The deconstructing is amazing. And like she comes and she also has an element of when she came into the story, she's competent at she what she competent. does. Like she was competent at like on the wrong side, but her competence is, in and of itself is hot. And I, I, I enjoy watching her. I'm reading, or I, I took a break because I've decided for an exam, but I started uh, The Shadow Rising again because my sister is reading it. So I wanted to refresh myself on where she is in the books and Egyan and Intenshiko. I love it. Like she's just there trying to, with Gelb and Gelb's being an idiot and she's trying to find, like she's competent. She's good at her job. And even if her job is bad at that point, and then she just, she does the thing that we all hope we do, which is when you are presented with information that makes you realize that your general assumptions are wrong, 
you will change. Like, I hope that that is a thing that I do. I'm sure I don't do it all the time, but you know, I try you know, to. Yeah. I, I mean, I have, to. I have in a lot of instances and yeah. I, we, I know the two of us have talked extensively about that in private yeah. in our friendship yes. Yes. Um, yeah. about like all the things that we once believed that we no longer do. Yeah. Um. So I, I like to think that, uh, yes, I have done that already. Obviously mm -hmm. always we could do more and yeah. I'm trying to do more, but damn, Adiana, Adiana 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 had a lot of stake right yes. in, in her position mm -hmm. and then just fucking jettisoned it. The minute that she got new information. Yeah. That's a hard thing. I wish we spent more time with her and her mind yeah. because that is a hard, hard thing to do. It is. And wow. I'd, so to me, that's like very hot. Is because yeah. to me, what what frustrates me and I can't stand is someone who is proven to be wrong, right? Mm -hmm. And especially in like gentle ways. Oh, yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Where they're like, that's that's actually not how it goes. And they just double down. Yep. That's why I, I fucking can't stand two on. Mm -hmm. is that just mm -hmm. constantly happens she's seeing yeah. evidence that she's wrong and she's just like don't care yeah this is where for two on for me while i can i don't like two on uh just realizing that was part that was the comment was also because i had talked about two on in a video that you can't watch but i had said like i i don't like her as a person but i find her a fascinating character because it's real it's so yeah. fucking real Oh, she's definitely a, a, a character we need to have and a perspective yeah. we need to have for sure. Yeah. Because like we need that foil to egg on in like because because yeah. deconstruction is not easy. And a lot of people no. find it easier to and more pleasant to stay yeah. in the bubble that they're in. And that's, yeah. you know, not great, not good. Shouldn't do it. Yeah. But like shouldn't. a lot of people but do. Like, and for two on it, it's like for her to 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 deconstruct would be to give up everything. But then I'm like, then we're in this rom-com between her and Matt. And I'm like, no, yeah, no, yeah. no. Yeah, yeah. If he's going to be in a rom-com with the shot with a Sean Chan, it's going to be a Gionin. Otherwise. I, no. Oh, I would. But I love her and Bale. But I would, I I would do, go for yeah, it. Yeah. Matt's not right for her. But like, I yeah. mean, if we're going to go there, it's got to be someone who's deconstructing. Yeah. I, because I'm sorry, our, Matt does not deserve to be with a slaver. Like, that's just not. Yeah. No. Yeah. It, yeah. Hard, t hot take. Slavery is wrong and not hot. Like. <laughs> wow. You're so, you know? I'm, try, I'm clapping. So, uh, you are so that's brave. My bravery. So I know. Brave. That's really brave of me to come out yeah. and say, right? A very yeah, hot yeah. take. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> and so, Agiana to me is hot because it's like, God, the balls that woman has. Yes. Like, just the yeah. fucking temerity the yeah. like just emotional intelligence i mean just think like, mm. of everything she gave up i mean if we're talking about yeah. people give up everything i mean she gave up everything not for a man but to do what was right and then to ultimately do, that's got the a man. i was gonna say yes she but, was it was it, she didn't give up because oh this seems like yeah because bail is so fine whatever it was this information has proved my general assumptions about the world wrong I and cannot like we, be the we same. Don't, yeah. And we don't get as enough of her perspective, but we get, we do get her thinking that. And I love that I, uh, for all that I criticize RJ for things, but I do love that there are moments that we actually get to see her being like, well, wait a minute. I like, I was told that the Aes Sedai would want to rule the world and they haven't done that here. That's weird. Yeah. Huh. Like I, we get to see her figuring it out and I love it. Yeah. I just, and also, Bail Dumon falls in love with her on sight. Yes. She's got to be yes. hot. <laughs> she's got to be. She's right? got to be. There's no way yeah. she's that hot. Like, yeah, yeah. he look, takes one look at her and is like, that's my girl. And I'm yep. like, look. <laughs> look. Even with the yeah. tragic Sean Chan haircuts, she can pull. So she is yes. hot. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Yeah. All these people were like, Sir Roth's hair in the show. I know we're not talking about the show. But, and I was just like, it's in the book. It's I mean, literally it, canon. It, it's literally like, canon. They're all like, oh, it looks silly. And I'm like, yeah, it looks silly in the books too. We yeah. just didn't have to see it. You know, yeah. the Sean Chan hair is <laughs> silly, but yes. whatever. <sighs> um, but yeah, yeah so uh, yeah, Agiana is hot to me. Egwene is also hot. I will come out here and say she's a little young for mm. me. So that's hard for me to look mm. past. But if we're bird boxing that. Yeah, yeah. She's boxing. objectively hot. She uh, is really competent. She's ambitious. Mm. 
um, which people hold against her. And I think there's nothing wrong with it. Um, yeah, I think, yeah. Because in these books, boys are handed it. power yeah. and the girls have to work for it. And I think that's, ugh. but whatever. But it's, but it's a matriarchy. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, if I get one more of those TikTok comments, I'm going to friggin' scream. I'm like, okay, yeah. okay. Uh, mm, yeah, but uh, Egwene, she becomes Amr Lindsay. She becomes literally mother. Yes. She, uh, uh, multiple men are attracted to her, so she must mm -hmm. be hot. Um, yes. She does have terrible taste in men, though. She is and that is the thing that knocks her down for me. Really, the mm. big thing is her terrible yeah. taste in men. Like, if a man that I was dating, I was like, mm -hmm. hey, I was actually there and I saw it and it didn't go down yeah. that way. And if a man I was dating went, yeah, but I'm going to stick with my thing. Again, when we're talking about doubling down on wrong beliefs, yeah. I would leave them immediately. Yeah. I don't have random, time for that Random bullshit. peddler two books ago told me this other thing. So You're going to believe, believe random peddler literally called old mill, like old rumor <laughs> mill. You're going to believe him over me over who was me. there and saw it is yeah. literally like doing lap stuff with you. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. <laughs> goddamn not. No, no. Same thing with For Tuan. I can't with Gowan. I can't yeah. until they I just fix themselves. Yeah. For me, the thing that knocks Egwene down, like I, I all in on Egwene until book six, I think where she, apologizes to the wise ones for the lie that she told them that had literally no impact on their life but the same lie she told Nynaeve that like totally deconstructed Nynaeve's sense of self doesn't apologize to her for it and Which Nynaeve saved that? her life oh, it's uh, okay Nynaeve thinks does it okay it's sort of the same lie. the tea thing lie, is also really valid oh yeah 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 but I yes <laughs> but the um Egwene has lied to the uh, wise ones and told them that she's uh, an I said I, and she's not, right? It doesn't right. have any impact on their lives. No. But Nynaeve doesn't know that Egwene has made that lie. So Egwene lies to Nynaeve about the fact that she's lied. And that when Nynaeve starts to sort of figure it out, that's when she does the, here, I'm going to put something nasty in your mouth and then does the thing that we bird box. And like, it's to try and get Nynaeve to stop asking questions she basically lied, does all of this to her to get Nynaeve to stop asking questions, right. which completely undermines Nynaeve's self sense of confidence, which in book five is part of her falling down a hill. And then at the end, uh, like at, when she's going back to Saladar, Egwene is like, I should apologize to the Aiel for the lie that I told them because I have utmost respect for them. Yeah. But I'm not going mm -hmm. to apologize to, to my, my friend from childhood friend. Yeah. who saved my life once. Like, yeah, that bothers me. That there's bothers. there's quite a bit to bird box about Egwene. There's a lot yeah. of hot stuff there too. But yeah, no, yeah. I'm oh, with you oh. on that. that. Yeah, yeah. That she has some real moments. She had some real, real. She has like a like real she, moments. She is an amazing character, and I think I've said this to you before. I will come to Egwene's defense much faster than I will come oh. to Nynaeve's defense. Like I am Egwene in a lot of ways. Yeah, like it's naive when people are like, but naive is so aggressive and angry and loud. And I'm like, yes, all of those things are true. And if you don't like her for them, that's fine. But yeah. usually when they don't like Egwene, it's like, but she's ambitious and sometimes rude to boys. I'm like, and fuck and you. And what fuck is you. wrong with that? They're rude to her too. Like, yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> like, exactly. like they are, she's just giving it back to them, A. Yes. And B, yes. like, so what? What's wrong with an ambitious woman? Nothing. Especially like she, she yeah. was put in a position of power. Her ambition was is not to like get power. It's to like you put me in this job. I, my ambition is to do the job well. Yeah, and she was in the weirdest boob ceremony of all time and like handled God. that. <laughs> yes, yes. Like it's just. Ugh. I am the a woman. Of Egwene drive oh, me crazy. Geez. Yes. Yeah. So, you know, I think uh, Egwene has a lot of love. I have a lot of love for Egwene. For me, she's more little sister. Mm, yeah. Yeah. That, for me. Then she is, and I want to protect her versus Eggie yeah. on. And I'm like, I would meet you at a bar. I want to know your whole yeah. life story. And like, I wouldn't be apologizing to a pixel if you know what I mean. Like we'd be, <laughs> we'd be end game because yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I fuck with somebody who will deconstruct <laughs> that much yes. when they're presented with, with what's right. Like exactly. hell yeah. So, but yeah, Egwene, I love her. All the two Rivers kids feel like siblings, to, little siblings to me, though. So mm -hmm. I can't quite go there. Mm -hmm. But I do love Egwene. And so I yeah. get why people voted for her, because frankly, 
I identify a lot with her in yeah. so many ways because she's just, I'm an ambitious woman who, you know, is a bit of a try hard. I think there's nothing mm. wrong with a try hard woman. Uh, but yeah, I just, I just, I couldn't do it for it, but a bunch of people disagreed with me because she won with 69.2% of the votes. I do think Aggie nice. Annan deserved to do better, but maybe Will Takes Goggles will uh, help her next year. Who knows? I hope so. I hope so because I, I love her so much. But I, I, up against one of the main, I I, I, I get it. I get why. Like, I get for it. Me, yeah. It, yeah. Yeah. I get it. And this is just, this isn't to say because some people were like, it's impossible for a side character be to beat a main. I'm like, Logan beat Rand. Yeah. Aludra beat Matt. Like yeah. it is, it is happening. Barrelane took the whole cup. Like Barrelane took, yeah. yeah. Barrelane took the whole cup, mm -hmm. and she's annoying. <laughs> so, <laughs> yes, yes, that's a lot to overcome. Like mm. we, we, I, we've realized during these cups, like we will forgive a lot of things, but we will not forgive annoying. And no. somehow we, like Barrelane, <laughs> overcame how annoying she is in the books to win. Yeah. So that if that doesn't tell you how hot she is, nothing will. Yeah. So yeah. we've got the next one, which is under the mat. That's Galad versus Aludra. Oh yeah, this one was hard for me. I think I, I must like I think I just went with my lesbianity and went Aludra. Because they're both that's really valid. hot. Hold yeah. on, I'm gonna turn on the lights because it's getting dark as fuck. Okay. Yeah, though they're, they're both really, really hot. And y'all but... want to see PD, I'm sure, in the background. Oh, look at him. A perfect angel. He's so used to <laughs> podcasting at this point. He just like goes to his bed and chills. I, I love that. I love him so much. But so yeah, so we got Galad and Aludra. I've also voted Aludra because mm. Aludra. I mean, women in STEM. I mean, yeah. women in STEM are hot. No, yeah. period. No question. No. And fireworks and and blowing things up is hot. Objectively, yeah. um, I I also grades. yes, and I had canon her relationship with Matt because like they kind of canoodle a bit. That like she was the. Uh, that she took the lead in that, and which I also find really hot. That's how mm -hmm. I had gotten it. Yeah. Aludra is just so hot. She beat Matt yeah. Cawthon in yeah. the first Grinwell Cup. Mm. And Matt is also hot. But I, mm -hmm. oh, yeah, she's she's good at her job. Again, competence and explosions and bombs and hot lady with braids. Yeah. Yeah. I think, I mean, no question. She's hot. She mm -hmm. also beat like Uno Joylin. I mean some hot guys. Yeah. Some 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 fan favorites. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh she beats a lot of people. She typically makes it to the end. She hasn't okay. won yet, but she does typically make it really far as does Lan. I think I think likely the end may be some combination of like Aludra Lan Lanfear. Okay. Um some and some there, yeah. secret fourth. <laughs> Okay. Okay. Well, Liana, I mean, they, they all yeah, yeah. usually do really well. So it's right, like right, right. Yeah. not surprising to see them toward the end. Yeah. Gallad. Canonically hot. As canonically fuck. hot. Canonically the hottest man. It's kind of the reason why we started the Grinwell Cup is Lanfear was canonically the hottest woman. Berlaine was the yeah. hottest non-forsaken woman. And Gallad was the hottest man. And I was just like, I just don't agree that that's how the human mind works. Yeah. I, we not. can't agree on anyone. Like, mm -hmm. look at any attractive celebrity and you'll have somebody saying they're not hot. Yeah, yeah. Which I just, we just don't all have the same taste. And and the, everyone's entitled to their bad taste, including mm -hmm. uh, Gowan. But, uh, <laughs> but no, nobody's allowed to be attracted to Gowan. That's just, that no. And yet he gets us. But I know. I, uh, I, I like Gallant a lot more now than I used yes. to. Because yeah, before he was the narc who turned into a white cloak, which mm -hmm. both of those things are not hot. No, you no. know, just not, not hot. Um, I don't tend to think that black and white thinking is very hot either. Mm -hmm. Like rigid rigidity. I mean, yeah, obviously there are some things where you're like, I would hope that you are rigid about these morals, right? Like these for example, slavery. Bad. slavery I, I don't want to hear nuance about that. That's a no. that's a no from, <laughs> yeah. from me. Like, I yeah. don't want to hear nuance about certain issues at mm -hmm. all. Um, but that's not true for everything. Yeah. And I find people who have, like, black and white thinking for everything really exhausting because I'm like, sometimes Jean Valjean stole a loaf of bread to feed his, like, sister's child who was close to yes. death. You know, like, shit happens 
Life mm-hmm. is messy. We need to be allowed to like examine the mess a little bit. Yeah. And when we make these blanket statements, that like really is not is not uh, is not great. Rigidity yeah. is only hot when it's literal, not when philosophical. Agree. So <laughs> I feel yes, like yes. I feel like he'd be a guy where I'd present him with new information and he'd double down on the old mm. wrong thing. And so to me, like it gives the same thing as Gawain and the same thing as two one. I'm just like, okay, I can't. I can't be with somebody like that where yeah. they can't uh, re-examine their thinking. However, that's how I felt about him before. Mm-hmm. That's how I felt about him before. And then this guy completely turns on me and stabs Eamon Valda in the face. Yes. Defending an assault His. victim. Yeah. Now, defending an assault victim and stabbing the assailant in the face is maybe one of the hottest things you can possibly do to me, like I mean- in my mind. Like, yeah, I don't love hot. the idea of stabbing someone in the face, but at the same but time. But if you have to stab someone in the face. Stab someone in the face. This is who you stab. I mean, that was hot. Yeah, it's hot. I wish more it's gays hot. had gotten to do it herself. But if, but for lack of more gays getting to kill Valda herself, mm. I will allow Gawain. And yes. that was hot of him. Galad, Galad, not Gawain. Gawain hasn't done a good Sorry, thing. Sorry, Jesus. Well, I'm being set up for failure by Robert Jordan. <laughs> yes, you know that. I know, I know this. Yes, yes. But so Galad, <laughs> uh, it also drives me a little batty that she had a Galad and Gawain and then didn't go for a G for Elaine. That's enough. Mm. I'm like, either you yeah. do all three or you don't do like, you know, the third gets yeah. left out. It drives me nuts. I'm like, it's n- not a Gabriella or something, you know, whatever. Mm. But it's Arthur. It's all the Arthurian legend happening in that. Family, Listen, so. I get it. I get it. It just yeah, bothers yeah. me personally. I'm a complete, mm-hmm. I'm like either complete it or just like yeah. one of yours right there. Yeah, that's true. She's a book one character. So we could have moved things around. Guinevere is a Gwen. It's a Gwen no, out here. I know that. I know that. But it makes yeah, more yeah. sense being a lay. I know. I know. I know. So, and, and it completes the, tr- the three G's. It, it, yes. So anyway, bothers yeah, yeah. me. But mm-hmm. so. Yeah. Uh, so I don't. Yeah. So I no longer really feel as as anti Gawain or Gala. Mm-hmm. Jesus, anti Gala as I used to. Right. Because obviously he won a lot of points back. And that's a me. lot of points. That's a I lot have a, of points. I have a lot of head cannon with Gawain or Galad, not Gawain. Fuck, you're, you got me doing it now. I know. <laughs> I know. We're set up for failure. <laughs> yes, I have a lot of head cannon with Galad about like the trauma that he experienced when his mom was just like bye and like just left that's true and he is and so i feel like a, a his lot dad of his, died his dad dies and uh possibly trying to kill his mom like maybe he knows about that or, or his stepmom but maybe like there's a lot of stuff going on in in his head that i think that he became in again my head can he became rigid to try and make the world make sense like yeah. these are the rules these are and so i give him a lot more leeway than i would another character like a two on or it's true or we do rigid. have to take the trauma into account and i do think that they may be in the show this is my little theory that they may be going mm-hmm. with taryn gale was a um abusive parent mm-hmm. i could see that yeah because i feel like you don't go from zero to kill your spouse yeah you know, try to kill yeah. your spouse like he seemed like a bad guy yeah yeah uh he also was like not an, at all emotionally invested in his children. Lini says that. So like, yeah. it's on the table. Mm-hmm. And, you know, anyway, I like maybe had an explosive temper or something like that. And they not like fully, fully, but you know, mm-hmm. like something, something was up with that guy. So like Gallad had not a great dad, mm-hmm. was raised by a stepmom who seemed like she did like as she tried her and- best. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but, you know, I mean, it, it's still hard um, and your mom disappears, and leaves you. I mean, that's hard. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, you're right. There is there are some really redeeming things about Galad where I'm like, OK, we'll we'll give you a pass on a couple things. And you did stab your mom's assailant in the face, which we did yeah. love for you. Mm-hmm. Um, and he's canonically the hottest. That which... is Robert Jordan thinks he makes all the ladies. Yeah, I yeah, <laughs> you know he doesn't. He's not funny for enough for me. I need, I need a man who yeah. makes me laugh. Like it just, yeah. he would not make me laugh. I don't think, and I don't yeah. think he'd laugh at my jokes. And that's a really big factor for me. That's it's both. Yeah, yeah. He's not funny. Like 
for when I think about Galad, my thoughts are more like it's a weird thing. I feel sorry for him, which is not hot. Like I just yeah. like I, I I feel like you need a lot of hugs. Yes. And, and therapy. That, Again. Yeah, and therapy. Yeah. Not, Rosa Luther I mean, does not seem to need therapy. She's no, like, she deconstructed no. from that from that group and just, just like, mm -hmm. I'm going to go my own way. And again, back to the Liana thing, that is hot. Yeah. 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 So yeah. for me, it's a Ludra. It's but a Ludra. I see yeah. the arguments for Galad for sure. Way mm -hmm. more this year than I ever have in my life. Right. Of course. Of course. Yeah. This would be where, think, it, where you become to see it. Yeah. yeah. And I do think Robert Jordan's going to like hook, hook him up with Bear Lane because he's going to need a, an end to that plot line. And they're both canonically the hottest people. And I feel like oh, that's okay. where that's going to go, which I'll be kind of like, I, but I do think they'd actually be good for each other because I think they'd fix mm -hmm. each other a little bit. Okay. And I know you can't fix a person, but like maybe you can grow together in a positive way. Like I think he'd teach her not to be such a creep. Right. Um, okay. And okay. I think she'd teach him to not be so rigid. I think they'd be good, okay. maybe good for each other. So thoughts, potential. And he'd protect her from the assassins. Oh, right, right, right. She has, yes. You can yes, protect yourself, but it's right. nice yeah. to not have to go through that alone, as we've said. Right. You know, right. it's of nice course. to have yeah, your, yeah. a spouse that has your back. Yeah. Okay. Next, do we, oh, Aludra won that with 57.5% of the vote, but that's pretty close. That's pretty, that's, yeah, I'm, I, I'm actually surprised. I thought Galad would take that one even yeah. when I voted. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. So the next one's called, and this is the second to last round. I know you've been on with me for a long time, so I appreciate it. And I appreciate everyone who's been with us this whole time. You are all amazing. <laughs> um, but the next one's called Red Bedhead and it's Rourke and Elaine. So they're both redheads, which is why they're named, okay. it's named that. Yeah. This one was close. Yeah. They're, honestly, this year has been more close brackets than I've ever seen before. This so one, that's I, pretty exciting. I think I think I voted Rourke because I seem to remember apologizing to Kevin for <laughs> voting. Even though it doesn't make sense, I should like the lesbianity should make me vote Elaine. And yet, no, I guess she don't doesn't have, do it for you. She doesn't do it for me. I also feel like we're at a part of the books where Elaine is specifically like not very hot. Yeah. I mean, I, I have listened to your of... episodes. <laughs> like we've gone like, here's the thing about all of the characters is they go through periods where I'm like hot, love them. Amazing. I mean, not mm. hot because they're too young for me, but like otherwise, yeah. but I kind of bird box that a little oh, bit. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Cause I'm at an age where I'm just like, I have to bird box it. Otherwise I feel like I'm reading about children hooking up and I can't do that. But so see, this is one of those things where I think you talked about it uh, last year in the in the Greenwell Cup, where the show has made us remember how young they are because they aren't that young when I read the books. No, they're, they're all older when I read the books. You forget it, and I I feel yeah. like that is why honestly the like Two Rivers kids they did really well all the time in the first yeah uh, in the first year, and they have done a little less well in since following years since the show came out, and I yeah. think it's because yeah everybody was like. Oh, they're like kids, oh. though. Yeah, they're like really young. Yeah. You're but, like, like there's and things... they age them up in the show. Yes, and like I, I, you know, you were talking about it in that document about how you know the age gap, even when they are matched in age, how Robert Jordan had the women just looking younger. Mm -hmm. I never thought about that until the show was announced. The second the show was announced, I was like, wait, wait, wait! Mm. <laughs> it's like all the women look like they're twenty or something. Like, oh, what kind of fact? So we talked about Galad Aludra. Aludra did win that. Oh, I think she can't hear us yet. You are muted and maybe can't hear us. You are definitely muted, though. Yes. Yeah. She's looking very businesslike. Hmm. Hmm. And perplexed. Now we're all just watching Grendel. Like, yes. Is she going to figure out She's the tap? Figure it out. She's a good kid. No, she got the headphones. Okay, got the headphones, on. I think. Okay. Now for the muting. I don't think she can hear us yet because I'm not seeing any recognition in her eyes. Um, no. Yeah, you're probably right. Yeah. So. Yeah. You know, and she, she hasn't done any kind of like wave or anything. Well, no. we'll just, we'll keep going until she's on. Yeah. Okay. So work, work broke through your lesbianity is what we're he, hearing. I, I think is, I think he did. Yeah. Just. Again, I, and for me, this one, again, fully because of the age. 
I think it was just a case of, I can't, she's a child. Grendel, are you here with us? This was a beautiful thing to walk back into. What? <laughs> that, that, that broke, broke through my lesbianity? lesbianity? Broke Jenny's lesbianity. Well, because we yeah. just talked Not- about Eludra Gallad, yes. which Eludra yeah. won. Yeah. But it was close. Was full and force. Yeah. And then, and yeah, and Eludra is objectively very hot. Gallad is mm-hmm. canonically very hot and has hot. become hotter of late. Thank you. Yeah, finally. I finally get why everyone's into it. Because I kept being like, what is with, what is the deal? Mm, the like, thing. And like, it's, it's cra- like, Galad is crazy to me because like, as a youth reading the books, I was te- like, whatever Elaine's perspective of yeah, Galad was, yeah. I was like, yeah, that, like, this guy sucks. Mm-hmm. And then the series went ahead and got finished. Um, And then we got some really important POVs of Galad, like along the way. I think you've read a couple of them in Knife of Dreams now. Um, yeah. In hindsight, he, and like rereads, he has become like truly one of my, my like the men that I will like die for. I like, really I'm, love him. I'm sad that Morghese didn't get to do the vengeance herself. And I'm not pro-murder, obviously. But if you're going to murder somebody. <laughs> I mean, this, this, this. this Murdering your mom's assailant yeah. is hot. Yes. Super objective, hot. objective. Especially like stepmom. Oh my god! Yeah, where it's like you didn't even have like she didn't like, even have to. I mean, you you did because like you know, the respect. but like, but Ugh. like she, she like you you love her enough to do that for her, even though she's not biologically your mom. And like you know what? Here's the thing. Here's the thing. That is absolutely possible. I have step parents. I love them very much. Right. Mm. You get raised by somebody. It doesn't matter if you share blood, but it's like a beautiful yeah. thing to be reminded of. You know what I yeah. mean? It's a beautiful thing. They have a be- they have a beautiful relationship, and that he was like going to bat for her was beautiful. He's too rigid for me. Hmm. Too rigid. Yeah. So that's where we landed. But but has drastically increased his hotness. Oh the, yeah, yeah. I mean, just this book. I'm so excited. It was to like like Renwell well next book. year. I'm oh. so excited. I'm I'm excited. I'm interested to see Grinwell once I've read everything, because then we get to actually talk about. Yeah, that everything. that'll be. Th- oh yes. Oh whoops. But so yeah, we're at Rourke Elaine. Mm-hmm. Both are oh. hot. Elaine's but, kind but, of a not hot mean, part of though? her story, though. Yeah, mm. right. She's objectively being a little. She's making some judgment mm. calls. I'm not She's, loving. Yeah. yeah. I use this for a lot of my men writing women. Um, mm-hmm. this is my manifesto, like RJ trying to write a woman and like, let's be so clear, writing a woman in her first trimester. Um, <laughs> the way that he goes about this is hideous. Um, I, I can appreciate that now having lived a journey myself, mm-hmm. uh, through pregnancy and I just hate it more than I can. It's like he took every mild complaint Every like, every every issue a, a woman has ever expressed about pregnancy, and then he tried to just put that into one body. Um, so I this is a this is a big bird box moment for me with Elaine because I just refuse to see it as her problem. Yeah. This is a man's problem. Yeah, mm-hmm. I think yeah, I think that's been a very big thing for tonight. Is it's like when was it a narrative problem and when was it a character thing? Yeah, yeah, and like you know what are we bird boxing? Elaine, uh, I love Elaine. We love women in STEM. That's hot. Mm -hmm. Love it. Another, like, I I love that she doesn't want Rand to hand her the throne. Yeah. That's great. Getting knocked up in an apocalypse, questionable decision making, Mm. to be honest. She could have taken that tea, but yeah. You know, I mean, when we have this guaranteed birth control right here, a little Mm. questionable as a decision. I mean, yeah. to me, it just says she doesn't think that he was going to survive, and she wanted to make sure she got it while the going was good. And listen, I and I get that, and that has been explained to me. But I'm still like, mm-hmm. when we're thinking about what's best for, it's the apocalypse a practicality perspective, like what's best for your f- potential children, and what's mm-hmm. best for mm-hmm. having a having kids with a man who may murder you, is maybe not a mm-hmm. good idea. I just, I'm just saying, I, it may not be a good idea. And I get that that's a journey that she has signed up for, but I don't mm-hmm. know if it's a journey she should maybe bring children on. 
Well, we've had one lose clues junior. Why not make another and just oh, like see if it's different to go around? <laughs> yeah, it's just it's just it's a lot of responsibility when the world is going to shit. And I don't know if we want to birth children when the world may end. It's just I don't know. You know it's a con- it's a consideration. And it, and she made it. Feels it. A she, little made, inconsiderate. she made choices. Well, like <laughs> But then I'll also put this to you. Like, doesn't Rand also have options of taking, like, tea birth control? Or did RJ not get to the male no, conception? No, in his story? he did not. Because I will oh. flag fourth wing again for everyone who has not read it. Yeah. The birth control goes both ways in that fantasy series. And, and it's yeah. not I'm just like, an Elaine God. problem. Yeah, and I'm like, thank and I would God. Say, like, Rand's out here bang a langin When was the last time he checked up on what the birth control situation was? Like, if you're going to be dick-slinging, you need to double up and make sure that tiny humans will not result if you don't want that. Dick-slinging like, with three different women. So that's three mm-hmm. different women that could get pregnant. Yeah. Like, what you doing, Rand? What we do. And I surely not the power like... can do something. Like, you could just put, mm. like, a, a power condom or something over it i tend to not like um pregnancy <laughs> plot lines too yeah couldn't we weave some air or something like an air imagine he, I'm imagine he ran channeling at his dick he's just channeling towards his dick <laughs> i mean let's be honest they've tried that you know what i mean like, you can put a shield around anything is what mm-hmm. i've learned like well, i'm on i'm positive that they have used the power to <laughs> do funny things to their genitals. oh i'm sure they I, have <laughs> I, I, it's human beings that's like the first thing someone tried yes you know but I, i'm sure the novices get in trouble for it all the time <laughs> i'm i'm positive I mean, that like the infirmary is just canon. filled it's, yeah it's it's actually canon i don't know if you remember this but in a uh, new spring swan i think uses embarrassing caresses on on Moraine to try and distract her during her practice of the test. You're using the power to do that's canon. I'm that's positive canon. power to finger blast. That the inf- <laughs> yes. it, that the infirmary is filled with novices who have like gotten hardened air stuck up their places. You know what I mean? I just am positive. It's how people work. Like, like I, you can't, you can't in, uh, convince me that they just, haven't figured out like condoms by air. Um, like it, it would be called shield yourself and it would be like, mm-hmm. obviously one of the first weaves that you learn at the black tower. Um, you, like, and, and that they haven't developed better ways to handle like menstrual flow. No, oh, you can't convince yeah. me they haven't. That's, done this. I'm like, that's how, you know, it's not a matriarchy mm-hmm. is the priority has not been like, first of all, women dying in childbirth when, yeah. in a matriarchy, like we would have yeah. figured that out. Like we would be figuring yeah. that the out. tower would be all over that. Now yeah, they have say, literal you, magic women able to like keep people yeah. from dying. No, no, you, you there's have, no way. You have you've not lived until you've gone down the I said I menstruation and menopause rabbit hole with Brie. You just have to you have to right. go down this conversation. It is I'm just like, yeah. that's how you know. That's how you know <laughs> yeah. that 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 argument is full of shit. Like, I'm sorry, yeah. like women's reproduction would be top of the Fair list. Paramount. Mm-hmm. Top of the list. Mm-hmm. Women's reproductive rights of all kinds would be top of the mm-hmm. list. So there's no way. And men would be taking birth control. There's yes. no way. There is no, no way. Not a damn yeah. chance. No, no. Yeah. When the power exists, when you can just like snuff those little buddies out before. Did you know? I did not know this. When the semen is released into you, it just like chills in your abdomen. After. Mm-hmm. It just like goes there and it like goes off a ledge and dies. And they just like hang out there for for days. Well, I knew I knew about that, like for like, because conception doesn't usually happen when the blast happens. Like it doesn't just like blast right into the egg. I know what heterosexual sex is. I I have I know about things. <laughs> it usually happens like a couple of days later, right? You cannot be doing this when my mouth is full. <laughs> I'm sorry. Be, I mean, actually, I actually need a new podcast. It's going to be called Jenny Lesbians describing heterosexual, heterosexual sex. sex. So when the blast happened, <laughs> you weren't. Yes, you were a part of the cum gutters discussion of me just being like, but I don't understand. I don't oh understand. my god! <laughs> I'm literally tearing up. I'm sorry. I apologize. Oh, it's, um, I was just like, I was trying to save my life right there. I got choke on some pizza. <laughs> the Grinwell Cup could be lethal. 
But so we've got, yeah. So Elaine, she's going through, I I tend to hate pregnancy plot lines because I always feel like it reduces women to like their only character trait is pregnant. Yeah. Mm. Like all the plot lines then are suddenly like about being pregnant and it's like they take stupid pills. Yes. And it's like, look how emotional and hormonal they are. And it's how unreasonable they are when they're pregnant. How stupid and forgetful they are. And like, listen, hormones are a thing. Pregnancy brain is a thing. Like, obviously, this is all a thing, right? And you're not going to necessarily be your best, most bubbly fun self when you are carrying a human being. Maybe you are. Also, are you not? Like, are you not capable of just being like yourself, but a little bit more snoozy? I think you are. And hormones Hmm. balance out after a few weeks. They sure yeah. don't last as long as Elaine's dealing with. Yeah. So, you know, I just, I tend, I tend to just, when the pregnancy plot lines start and they're like, I want pickles and ice cream. I'm like, like ha- let's come up with some new material. Yeah. Yeah. About they women don't let the pregnant woman pregnant. like eat what she wants and they try to control her, especially when it's women doing that. Um, I would be homicidal. I would be no. like, I'd be homicidal, not pregnant. Like, if I am a neurodivergent person, if I don't have my hyperfixation food, everyone's dead. Like, mm-hmm. <laughs> everyone's dead. Yes. Yeah. I will not be reasonable about it. So, like, mm-hmm. the idea of them being like, you're carrying life, two people in you, two, not just one, mm-hmm. two people, which we're not getting twins on the first try. He's such a man, whatever. But so, <laughs> but I, yeah, I feel like, I would I would kill someone. I, I'm oh. not a violent person, but that would set me over the edge. That really would. I would not be a good person to anyone. And listen, I know there are things pregnant women can't eat. And I'm not discounting that, right? Like deli meats and sushis and some cheeses, soft cheeses, whatever. Yeah. And I know that's like got nuance. Wine has nuance, right? Like, yeah, it's, it, you know, it. it's just not a lot. You can't have a lot of it whatever every like everything has everything has perspectives and of course the hard line has to be zero because mm-hmm. of risks but like we like it's a, it's a separate conversation it's a bullshit conversation it was yeah. rampant in the 90s about what you can and cannot be eating of course and so yeah. I, I know where this comes from it is just as you like pregnancy plot line unless it's done like well and like it can be done a pregnancy plot line can be done like pregnancy honestly can be great pregnancy can also be shit it doesn't change intrinsically like who you are as a person yeah that's the thing yeah yeah. like and and everyone has their own pregnancy journey right like and that and that's it's cool it's just like a a part of your character like i would have liked to see with elaine especially like so early on in pregnancy right because like you're at this point she's super young so she's definitely not showing in the first trimester um and she's leading yeah like she's leading a country she's uh i just would have liked to see more of her intelligence not be like Mm -hmm. written off as pregnancy because it it, especially in the this the year 2024 it is irksome to me and that women lose their powers while they're pregnant i hate that women women somehow become less women how somehow become like less it it reads a lot like you know back in 2016 when a certain candidate was suggested um wouldn't be fit uh for leadership because um you know hormones and emotions etc etc and like when when men write pregnant women um that is what i get a lot of like let me be so clear like my it doesn't like I know so many I know doctors, I know nurses, I know lawyers, I know badass women like Senate, like people who lead this country, people who lead with their intelligence, STEM, like women of STEM who are pregnant and continue to do their job yeah. and yeah. do it well. Like yeah. it doesn't it doesn't stop you from doing your job well. And what this mm-hmm. reads to me in this plot point is is like actually it kind of does. Well, and Elaine, and, like yeah. she's crazy. Yes, yeah. Uh, the, this yeah. Is, and this is my issue with literature and and the arts in general. When we present a pregnant woman, it feels like it's the same lens over and over and over again. There's like no nuance once a woman is pregnant. They are like not mm-hmm. still them. It's like they are pregnant, and that is their yeah. identity, and that's all they talk about, and that's all their plot lines are until they're not pregnant anymore. And it drives me yeah. bonkers. And it's the same. It covers the same shit over and over and over again. And I'm like, there are yeah. way more weird. First of all, there are way more weird symptoms being pregnant than just like nausea and 
being forgetful. Like there's like all kinds of shit that happens mm -hmm. to your body. Right. But also I think that like the message should be like how badass it is that you're growing a whole human yes. and, doing a, and running and, a country. And running a country. Yes. Like, oh my and, God. Like, it, well. crisis and the apocalypse. Like and there's the, so much going on. She's got a lot going on. She's handling her shit. And like, mm. we're instead going like, oh, but like, she, she's like forgetful. And I'm also mm. like, okay, I just do not believe that she would have an assassination attempt happen. And some creepy guy who is like creepy mm. saves her at the last minute, which seems like the obvious, like the most obvious ploy on the planet to get her yeah, trust. Yeah. Right. Oh, like, like a child could see through that. Right. Mm. And, and she's like, I'm going to promote like, like, him to court captain. training. Like she's got court training. She knows about assassination plots. I'm assuming. Are trained by one of the best. Trained yeah. by someone who survived assassination plots during exactly. her own succession. Like this is not new no. to the yeah. Dragons. Like this is this is like a stupid, stupid criminal playbook, right? Yes. Like this is like the oldest trick in the book mm -hmm. to getting someone's trust as a con artist. And you're telling me that she bought it. Mm -hmm. And some people have been saying to me that. Like, not just creepy, but, like, a salty. Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. yeah. The Hobbits is mm -hmm. a salty. And I'm just like, I just don't believe my woman mm -hmm. would do that. On the other hand, so that was a canonically not hot moment for me, where I was mm -hmm. like, you're going to promote him over all of these women and put him in charge of all of these women who he's going to victimize. And he's not going to be respectful of that power imbalance. Believe you really? me. Mm -hmm. And then she's just like, oh, he's a problem. Like, I would like to see her care about the women in her um, employ please. Yeah. But also, on the other hand, Avienda and Elaine's relationship is very hot. <laughs> yes. And I just thought of that just now. And I'm like, damn. <laughs> I mean, RJ really wrote the hottest scene in, in any book with the Avienda like bending over and being like, do what you want to me. I mean, stop. And he was like, they're friends. They're sisters. I'm like, no, no. Yeah. No. Watch, watch them do sister stuff together. We've this talked extensively about like platonic relationships and not platonic mm. relationships. This is not a platonic relationship. They're whispering to each other in the night. Combing each other's hair. Avienda's extensive monologue about uh, Elaine's body. Not like not even just once. Multiple times. Multiple times yeah. she is waxed poetic about how hot Elaine is. Mm -hmm. She's obsessed with Elaine. And the obsession is mutual. Like, you cannot tell me that that, like, made that, uh, whatever they're called, the sister ceremony or whatever, was not a marriage. They got married in that ceremony for surezies. It sure wasn't a sister ceremony. That I know for certain. Then it got ruined by them sucking titty, sucking Amisa's titty, which I was like, why are we doing this? Which some people have said she, they were just, like, at her breast. And I'm like, no, no, I know what I read. <laughs> <laughs> I know what I read. Okay. Mm. It was a rebirthing thing, which was like weirdly popular in the 90s. For it was huge in the 90s. Yeah, it was huge. No, yeah. we're not going to birth it better. Like what? The, who came up with that? Jail. Jail. <laughs> <laughs> right to jail. But then right away. Yeah, yeah. But so then, yeah, I feel like. Mm. Uh, oh, and you're quoting you're get on here yes. for the rent reference. Yeah, because yes. I'm a big musical theater nerd. But yes, there's just no way those two are sisters. So yeah, I, that relationship is very hot to me. But and so does that make Elaine hot hotter by osmosis? As uh, Filthy Hobbits is just pointed out, I am not on. I know this shocks the hell out of everybody. I am not on the Elaine Abbey train. I just never have been. I, does, I know. Jenny what? Does not, Jenny, Jenny does not choo-choo. I don't choo-choo. I don't choo-choo. I know. I know. How it's is just, that possible, Jenny? I know. I know. It's I'm shocking. actually offended. Like, I'm actually, You're... like, I'm, I'm considering, as a bisexual, revoking your card. I am revoking. You can't. It's revoked. I, sorry. To be fair, <laughs> Jenny has a great reason and is rooted in yeah. patriarchy. Oh, yeah, and it's, it's mostly about men. Yeah. Are you going to ruin yeah. them for me? What no, it? it's not. It's not them. It's the fact oh. that I, I like. I know people will point like I, I'm. Oh, I can't talk about the show, but the show has done it better by giving us good lesbian relationships. 
this has been presented to me as like, oh no, this is good. Let's be. It, it's not having women like having Rand have three girlfriends, two of whom occasionally fuck. It doesn't make like that's not lesbian representation. It actually is just more of a male fantasy. Mm, it's mm -hmm. just more like yeah, it's gross to me, and so I don't like it as being the thing. And I just yeah, I it I find I find Rand's harem gross just in general, and I don't like the yeah, it's cosine. Yeah, cosine. He grosses me out so. Yeah. yeah, because it's it's not polyamory, it's polygamy, which it's polygamy, is rooted yeah. deeply in male fantasy and, and patriarchy. And, and there's this thing that happens where people think of lesbian relationships as lesser. Like I, I brought this up, I think, in a conversation with you, Delusions, at one point. Like, I've had guys come to me in this fandom and be like, no, you could like sleep with my wife. It'd be fine. Like it's like, but would you yeah. say that to a guy? No, you wouldn't. Because a guy sleeping with your wife would be like, gee, that's, that's real. That's a real me, threat. Yes, but I'm not real because I, you know, I don't have the penis and the penis is the mm -hmm. only sex, apparently. So like, I've heard a lot of stories of bisexuals just being like the dating scene is so bleak because it's just like it's married couples hunting. looking for their, their third. Have yeah. you heard the term unicorn hunting? No. Oh, that's what it is. Yeah, they're unicorn hunting. Lesbian apps are full of it, too of bisexual of couples coming on and be like they'll flirt with you and you'll think oh i've met this really really cute bisexual girl and then like she'll be like and I, so you and my husband and me, no like, it's yeah. unicorn is the unicorn is looking for a bisexual who <laughs> actually wants to have sex with you and your husband like that's like it's it's so rare that's why it's called a unicorn and so yeah it's unicorn, just we it, like it's just <laughs> but I, I just don't like straight people in queer spaces. I, <laughs> it's just unpleasant. It's I just, unpleasant. I just don't like it. And I feel well, like it's, it's cause like, I see a lot of it in various lesbian spaces where bisexual women fully welcome, but that a lot of women come in and we, Oh, you're bi. That's great. I want, uh, yeah, sure. Absolutely. No, I don't want to have sex with you and your husband. Like that is it's so there's a, a, issue that happens with bisexual people feeling that they are not welcome it's like no you're welcome just please don't make me please don't ask me to sleep with your husband just please don't ask me to sleep with your husband like i don't want to do that <laughs> there are times too though where like gus and i you know being open-minded we're you know a straight presenting couple but obviously i'm bisexual mm -hmm. yes and so exactly. then you're always like Ugh, do i count whatever whatever you um, totally count i do totally count. I, <laughs> yes. oh, I totally count based on so many things but you know, at first you're like, do I even count? But then, then because we present as like an open-minded couple. Oh yeah. Right? yeah. Which That's a we're open-minded, but yeah. not in that way. Yeah. And we've had people come up to us asking mm -hmm. if we are interested and we're like, no <laughs> no respectfully do you do you like but mm. no so i've actually accidentally stumbled upon unicorns i suppose yeah yeah i, think um, you have. I guess wow. i didn't really appreciate what i had in that moment i was just <laughs> gonna say all the people desperately hunting for unicorns the reverse you unicorn them. hunt when does that to us more than one time well like a couple things have happened to us more than one time that have made us so uncomfortable one people assuming that we're siblings which why oh uh, yeah why but I mean, we're both blonde, but otherwise, why? Mm. But two, yeah, that. Where we're like, <laughs> what's the opposite? Like, what do unicorns hunt? Are you guys like the Red Bull of couples? I, I get, like, I guess, I guess I'm a little like, what is wrong with these straight couples? I can't find people to sleep with them. <laughs> I'm like, clearly, it's a them problem. <laughs> Clearly, clearly like one or both of them does not give good vibes. Like, clearly. Yes. and you know what? I know enough straight couples, purely straight couples to know that's probably it is like one or both of them is like off, you know? Off, so, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, it is telling that they always send the woman in. They never send the guy in. They always send the woman in to do the hunting. So that's because she's by and she's bored. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's yeah, what's yeah. happening here. Like yeah. she's by and managed to convince her husband that it's a fantasy of his. And that's <laughs> whatever. I mean, <laughs> uh, like, I feel like the vast majority of that kind of behavior, unless right, you're maybe, actually yeah, yeah. interested in being polyamorous, which this is not what that is. This is fetishizing no. queer people. Yeah. 
yeah is what it is and in my mind probably the the wife realizing she's bisexual but not wanting to admit it but wanting to have like her moment mm -hmm. that could be what it is or bi curious yeah. at least yeah yeah but it must be what mm. it is but but one but or both of them i'm guessing the husband is creepy so <laughs> <laughs> Probably yes. Yeah, that track. But but bringing it back to to Abby and Elaine, that is one of the reasons that I just like I don't. I feel that. It, I also have the, I just have this visceral, and I I will say this: you did not grow up in the world that I grew up in. I am enough older than you that there were no queers on TV, and so it was like or in books when I was Excuse like. Excuse me, Will and Grace. I was not a child, but, or like I was, Will and Grace was like when I was in university, they weren't like, like it was, I, they did exist, but I, I, I know what you're saying. It's just, yeah, I, I spent so much of my life having to do that, like head cannon and like, okay, they're not gay, but like Faith and Buffy, maybe really like it. Yeah. Like doing a lot of that. And so I get, an, I get, for me, seeing Abby and Elaine, I'm just like, but the actual lesbians in the book suck. Like, I don't want to give him credit for the shitty, for the this one good thing when the at once he actually was like, no, these ones are actually lesbians. They're just awful humans. Like, I just, I, oh, I don't give I him don't, credit yeah. for Abby and Elaine. I don't yeah, think he yeah. was trying to do that at all. Yeah, I think he accidentally wrote the hottest couple in the books yeah. by accident. Oh, and did not yeah. know what he wrote. I think he accidentally wrote queer people that I love but I don't think that he meant to he didn't think he meant to yeah I don't See, know. I'll, I'll, I'll take that better than he did it and he was being sly about it because I just it I don't want to like I love Robert Jordan I love these books I literally wrote Brandon Sanderson a letter to twice emails twice when he took over being like hi just so you know I, I really don't like the way lesbians are portrayed in these books. may I and have I a gay Another may I have a yeah. may, I, may I have a good gay, please? And, like he wrote me back. I two Brent, he wrote me back twice with like examples wow. of yeah. He my character in uh in that Baldur's Gate Five is named after one of the characters he wrote me back about. It was like, have you do you remember this character? She's a side character that nobody remembers. Her name is Arena. Do you know who she is? Yeah, no, I to yeah. I totally I totally get yeah. how get what you mean. And the minute that I. The minute that you said it's rooted in the patriarchy, I was like, oh, it's the fetishization thing. Yeah. I yeah. I I like couldn't believe I didn't think of that. Yeah. I think for me, I'm just like, I don't think he meant it as a fetishization thing. I think yeah. he accidentally wrote them. Because I, I think he was so bad at romance. And this is with all due respect. I think he was so bad at writing yeah. romance that he accidentally wrote a really hot couple and didn't realize it. <laughs> yeah. Like, I mean, the best... The best actual canon romance in the books for most people is Lana and Nynaeve, and it works because he didn't really show it to us. Yeah, <laughs> it's just like now they're in love. We uh, yeah, there we go. Oh, That's yeah. it. They're Trust just in love. Me, yeah. the sex is good. The more he yeah. gets involved, the more he know. ruins it. The more he gets yeah. involved, the more he ruins it. Like it, yes, <laughs> like the, like, Min and Rand were so great for a sec. <laughs> Fine for like a second, and then he's like, "But no, let her grind on his dick while he's in a meeting." In a Absolutely. meeting, I just I couldn't I couldn't handle that. I, I couldn't yeah. handle that. Grind on his dick another time, then I'm yes. here for it. But not Please. during a meeting, like yeah, that that uh, that's too horny teenager for me to handle. Like I just yeah. it reminds me of this time I had a student who came in, and I was like, and I've learned to stop asking students. I had learned to stop asking students what they did over the weekend because of this. He comes he comes in, and he goes, and I go, what did you do over the weekend? And he's like hooked up and he shows me like all these hickeys down his neck. And I was just like, <laughs> I am your teacher. Like what vibe am I giving off that? Like, that's fine that's for you to do in my classroom. Like, no, oh my God. Oh you my know, God. when you teach teenagers, they, they they do some wild shit and it's because they haven't yet developed like the social yeah they're like oh this is what adults do and what adults talk about it's like no i mean no. Like a, I, I, we, I had a speech with them at one point where i was like mm -hmm. there's a time and place like i understand that like you're growing up and this is stuff you're going to talk about stuff you're going to do but like not here never here like never yeah. like i'm like part of being adult is learning when and where those jokes are appropriate and when yeah. and where because i was like because you can get a lot of trouble as an adult when you Subtext. make a joke Sorry. 
in Sorry, about subtext it. was the word I was looking for before, and I couldn't remember the word subtext. Subtext. Sorry. Yes. Yeah. Yes. But I was like, you need to learn. Like, you no. part of growing up is like, yeah, you're going to make these jokes and like, you know, learn these things and mm. experience these things. But you also need to know when and where that's appropriate. And I feel like men yeah. at over 25 should know. Should have no. Yes. Yeah. That's delayed Not for me. Yeah. Yes. Uh, and then we've got Rourke, oh. who we haven't talked about yet. Well, his he's, relationship he's with the East. Unproblematic king. His I mean, relationship says, with the I, I, actually, I have a Liam. little, my one nuance with Rourke, and I actually, this is one of those things where I don't know. I'm not even headcanning it. I don't know what it is. He did something to Barrelane at some point where he's like, I don't want to give you a repeat. It's like, did he spank her? She's I don't know. Her, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I don't mm -hmm. know, but it, like if there's this weird thing where I'm just I don't know what happened there, and I kind of yeah, exactly. That's what oh I the don't spanking to it. put women in their places on the feminism list for yes, sure, and definitely. there's at least three examples of that happening. Yeah, which yeah. all bother me, but yeah, so that bugs me. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, uh, but and, other than and that, yeah, he's I don't know what you're and talking obviously about. It, there's it never the, happened. There's the polygamy yeah. thing. Which is never my favorite. I, polyamory, no. fine. Like, yes, yeah, so exactly. fine. Consenting adults do what you want, and if it yeah. were, but it feels like it's always like one and two. Yeah, like there's just always like a weird imbalance. Like there's a weird imbalance yeah, to me. I don't know why. He really didn't do, and he's he said that there were relationships where it was a woman and two men. Men, she just he Alana showed it. Well, Alana, that, like, but I guess in, never in the really... IEL culture, he so, said like, that? you could have. Think so that he said that like there's the equivalent of sister but, wives, but he never but, like, showed it. We just don't see it. I also think it's a prob a possible like consent problem that the men don't get to choose their wives yeah. in the IO culture. I'm like, I, that's what I feel like he uh, did that to make the polygamy better, and I yeah. actually think it made it worse. <laughs> yes. There's a who was it? I was it must have been Brie. When I have these conversations, it's always Brie, so it must have been Brie. Where it's like he tries to make things equal by making the other side also bad instead of making both sides good. So that's not like no, that's not how we want equality to be. Like that would that be like, oh, we need to, you know, the wage gap is bad, so let's just take money away from men. Like that, why don't no, don't do it that way. That's not what we want. <laughs> like <laughs> no, we want women to have raises, not men to yes. have worse. Like, yes. <laughs> take it from the billionaires. Like, my yes. God, the shareholders. Like, if I hear one what... more fucking thing about shareholders, oh, I'm going to go God. insane. <laughs> but yeah. Yes. No, I mean, yeah, that, that is so apt and accurate. It's like the equality we ordered on Wish. Yes. Yes, exactly. <laughs> exactly what it is yes all love and respect to robert but he wasn't perfect like we could talk no. about it like this in particular was a problem where i'm like so the men don't consent no yeah to who they marry we don't see a problem with that like yeah. i don't know man and so then yeah there's there's that and uh but work and Amise is like stare at each other across Ugh. the thing like they were alone. Stop it. Yeah. Yeah. I like my thing with Rourke is even like it's so minuscule. I had to think about it. But yeah, I think he's basically like a 99% unproblematic king. And he's wonderful. He's like, a great mentor. You... He takes women seriously. Yes. He like listens. He doesn't need to be the loudest voice in the room. Ran totally went to class with Hickey. He That's totally absolutely did. Yeah. true. Yeah. Yes. No. Yeah. He, totally he, went, he showed up to those meetings and he just was like covered in hickeys. Yeah. 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 I, uh, it, that was traumatic, but <laughs> yeah, I can imagine it would be. No, yes. it was fine. Um, but you know, kids are learning and they're, they do dumb things sometimes, but mm -hmm. yeah. What were we talking about? Sorry. Rourke. Rourke. Yeah. Oh, when a when a partner like looks across the room at you and you feel like the only person in the room. Yeah. I mean, that's like something else. He's good. A He's good a good thing. husband. He seems to keep yeah. them both happy. Yeah. He seems like he'd be good to them. He's he's in charge of a whole group. That's mm -hmm. hot. We know yeah. that he's got some level of emotional stability because he went to Roydian and came back. Mm -hmm. So he's able to handle some big truths yep. and change his behavior accordingly. Yes, which, we've which we know about. is hot. hot. Yep. So 
For me, it's Rourke. Yeah. Yes. Well, because yeah. Rourke, oh, Rourke is my like, like if I'm like, who's the hottest character in the Wheel of Time to me? Who's a man? It's Rourke. Mm -hmm. Okay. Followed by Davram Bashir. Yeah. Rourke is going to be an interesting one for me. I love men especially who when the wife. show when when the show comes out because like again, I read these books as a wee one, and so Rourke was like genuine, like not like Daddy Rourke, but like he was like he was like a dad figure, uh, like he was yeah. a mentor to Rand. He I'm too guided old for that. him, <laughs> and like uh, now, it's really difficult to read him in that light because like. I keep getting older, but he stays the same age. Well, it's kind of like <laughs> watching Twilight now, and you realize that the hot one the whole time was Bella's dad. Yeah, <laughs> the whole time. The whole time. So, I'm um, I'm conflicted with how I want to rank the hotness in this poll. I think I'm just gonna say like in terms of people again, like people I can go and have a beer with, and enjoy myself immensely. Um. Given how Elaine's arc is being written, I expect that she would be a pregnant person who would complain about not being able to drink alcohol, shame you for drinking alcohol in front of her, make As it if all about don't exist. Yes, make mm. it all about um, how your you drinking a glass of wine makes her feel because she is pregnant and like center yeah. it on themselves. Um, yeah. and that would just be like a real bummer at this point in the series. And I think Rourke would just be like, so, like he'd be someone that you go for a beer with and then you accidentally stay out till four in the morning. Cause you just are having like the most life changing chats. Yeah. I feel like, I feel like there's a lot going on with Rourke under the surface. Like he's yes. kind of a stoic guy, but like his little jokes with land and stuff. I mean, Ugh. I, 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 I like I, I humor is, I love it. I, I like, I like what, I don't like people who can't contribute to a conversation because then it's like pulling teeth, but like mm. folks who are, because I'm like, I can't be the only person in this conversation, you know what I mean? Where they're just kind of like, you're like, how is your day going? It's like, fine. Like yeah. that, that kills me. I'm like, please elaborate a little, <laughs> you know, but it's like a whole conversation of that. But I do like people who are a little more reserved, you know, who are like mm. chatty, but it's like, they're a little you know oh because because then it kind of feels like you're like it's like a cat you're like winning them over mm, i feel like yeah, work yeah, is yeah, like yeah. that like you know he's like a quieter guy on the surface maybe like my husband a quieter guy on the surface but once you get to know him he's like a riot mm -hmm. i love people like that where it's like oh those still waters do run deep you know they're like mm -hmm. really thoughtful and smart and funny mm -hmm. and you just kind of have to like bring so it out and like they yeah. know they know what you need without it ever being spoken. Like, that's what I get, the vibe I get from Rourke. And yeah. uh, to me, that, like, in these kind, like, I don't love, <sighs> if I could change how I wrote Elaine, I would. Like, if I mm -hmm. could change how, how she is on page, I would. Mm -hmm. But I'm not doing it for men, so I can't do it for Elaine. That's not fair. Yeah. So, yeah, it has to be Rourke. It's got to be. Well, uh, people disagreed with us. Okay. Uh, yeah, which it was close, uh, but Elaine got 52.6% of the vote, making Kevin many, very happy. How many accounts yeah, did okay. Kevin create during this? Exactly, yes. Yeah. It is suspicious because mm -hmm. work was leading for mm -hmm. most of the day. Mm -hmm. and, then and then suddenly, suddenly Elaine did really well. Kevin. Shocking, whatever. <laughs> Shocking. I can't control how people vote. I can only side eye. Mm -hmm. And then we get to our last round of the night. Thank you both so much, by the way, for being on with me for three hours. You all are amazing. <laughs> oh, I know I you have a lot. <laughs> but I, yeah. I did have a lot of fun, and I hope you had fun, too. Yes. Yeah. And thank you to everybody who stayed with my us. Week. I love hanging out with you, and I think that's why these go so long. I just I genuinely I, like everyone I bring on to Grinwell Cup. I'm like, I just adore not to say that I don't adore the people I don't bring onto the Grinwell Cup, but you know, I I just I feel like all of my guests I just I freaking love them. So I'm like I'm always like oh shoot Aww. this is gonna go forever, <laughs> but it's gonna be the most fun. So yeah. Yeah, thanks both for marathoning with me, but this is great. <laughs> so the last round of the qualifying round is hopelessly devoted to you. Landfear versus 90s. 
I got a lot uh, of how dare yous on this poll. Yeah, I believe I was one of them. So I figured I had I, to give myself I part. think actually we have blood feud, you, me, and me and Brie as well over this yeah. poll. Why did yeah. you do that with show goggles? Why did what? you hurt me like this? Yeah. I have a bad feeling. go both ways. Okay. It's like it's not sure, even a case of like the actor. Sure, it's season. Yeah, it's and like it's know. not even a case of the actor the attractiveness. The Lanfer in the show is so much more interesting. And she got sure. me. Lanfear in the books. Yeah. Matt Hatch has been working on me since I met him. Yes, exactly. And he hasn't and done anything. Not I, even a like, thing. Not the <laughs> companion, the expanded universe, people's attempts online. Needle multiple needle didn't live move. streams. Needle never didn't move. once. Never once have I shifted. Never once have I said yes, Lanfear. Nope. Never once. But like at least until three I watched times that during the season show. during my reaction, I literally said out loud, I have to apologize to Matt Hatch. I can't I have believe to apologize to I'm Matt enraged. Hatch. I'm enraged yes. at Natasha O'Keefe. How dare she? How dare she make me love Lanfear? How <laughs> dare she give Lanfear such depth and 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 nuance and understanding and like ambition and a personality aside from men? I yes. love I love, love it. Her. And now it's I love what they've done with her. She's, so, She's interesting. so interesting. Well, I also She's think so that they're going with the route of like the history says that she's only interested in men and that she's and boy then, crazy yeah. and the crazy ex and that it's actually more complicated than that. Mm -hmm. And I'm here for that. And she has that whole monologue. Okay, we're not talking about the show, but like I think that the content of the show is relevant, not Natasha's attractiveness. Exactly. Yeah, However yeah. attractive she say, may be. I I will say role. that was my that was my show goggles with Leandrin. I putting aside attractiveness, yes. Leandrin in the show is so fucking interesting. Yeah, like, yes. right. yeah, it's, yeah. Part of it is just that they are deepening these characters mm -hmm. for me in a way where yes, I'm yeah. like, oh, now they have like these rich internal lives that yes. feel so fascinating. Like yes. all of their motivations feel so clear mm -hmm. in these characters where like before. We got POV is hard because it doesn't mm -hmm. give you the ability to explore everybody's internal life. Like you get yeah. you, the characters you get, but you don't necessarily always get to get, dive into Leandrin's perspective or yeah, exactly. Landfear's yeah. perspective. And I think what's nice about making what the camera necessitates kind of a third person, unless you go mm -hmm. with like a POV shot, it necessitates mm -hmm. a third person perspective. You get a lot more room to play with other people's internal lives mm -hmm. i love what they're doing with Landfear. i feel like and when we talked about men i mean this is so relevant she has a whole monologue about how like kind of her snapping point was she changed herself for loose theron and that wasn't mm -hmm. enough yes yep Whew. yep and i loved that monologue because I was like, that's yeah, that it. Stunning. It's not mm. that she loves him. It's that she gave up everything for him and it wasn't enough. And that yeah. is a, that is a journey that I think a lot of women understand mm -hmm. and how fucking ho much that hurts when you're like, I have suppressed everything about myself to make you happy. And it wasn't. And to let you what? shine, like to help yes, to, yeah, you elevate yeah. you. And it wasn't yeah. even appreciated. Like, yeah. you didn't even see me. Mm -hmm. Like, fuck. Mm -hmm. Holy crap, Rafe. Like, that. Yeah. And and writer's good. room. Like, that yeah. That was like, oh, yeah. It was like when finding out that Masana went evil because she didn't get tenure. I was like, this is understandable and relatable. Yes. Actually. Yes. <laughs> good, good reason. I yeah. like total tangent but like i also know my mm -hmm. feelings on magedian and i've been very vocal about those and and I love my her. disappointment um your disappointment yeah i i am unprepared for season three yeah Un like wholly unprepared for what rafe is going to do and the nuance that he's going to bring to that character that i have been struggling with i really so like you don't i like can't magedian? I don't like Magedian. She's not on our goth girl ride. Like I'm, I love Magedian. I, I do have to admit, I think part of the reason I love Magedian is the naive of it all. But maybe I, Naturally. it might be. But I love her. I yeah. love her. I love the spider thing. I love from the mm. shadows. Like I mean, I love, I love the underhanded. I mean, the Magedian Shadow Rising. Sure. I love yeah, Magedian Winter's Heart showing up at the cleansing and being like. 
All right, never mind. Fuck you it. guys look yeah. like you have it handled. You, I'm going to see yeah. myself out. Yeah, this looks yeah. like it sucks, actually, yeah. and people are dying, and I don't want to. So yeah. I'm going to go. I love that, McGettian. Yeah, yeah McGettian's hilarious. Like, there's, like, she's hilarious, and she's, like, weird, and she's from the shadow. I, like, I love her because she's fucking weird. Um, and they did my girl justice, they, yeah. I felt. She's. She is not at all like I imagined, I will say, the show. like, But the second she showed up, I was like, I love you. I love you. You aren't at all what was in my head, but I love you. Oh, she's perfect. And yeah. here's the thing. It's so hard because Natasha is so tall. We're doing a random show tangent, but whatever. Yeah, yeah. Natasha is so tall. It's very difficult when you are shorter than another actor to yeah. look intimidating. Yeah. You have to act your ass off. To like mm -hmm. overcome the height differential. Yeah. And she did that. Yeah. Like she did With that. that. As like a dancer in the chat. Yeah. Like she sniffed. Lamb yeah. Like that sniff was so good. Oh, she's good. She, she's and weird. She fully she's like, a freak. she, Catherine Janeway, for any Star Trek fans out there, she was like, Kate Mulgrew is a very short actress, but she was able to do that where she would just like walk in a room and like be up to everybody's waist. But yeah, like tower over them with her her presence. When you're tiny, yeah. but you have to have like ten times the presence that the tall person has to yeah. overcome that. And like she, I mean, that presence was crackling, and yeah. like just her little, I mean, she just mm, like the sniff, yeah, everything. I just, mm -hmm. and then somebody posted on Twitter. They had the audacity to post on Twitter. Wow, finally everyone is standing Megedian, and I was like, but like. No one was standing her before, but now everyone is. And I was like, excuse me. Hello. I have been here this I whole cast time. her as Jodie Whittaker. Like, you have to know this. I love I've her. I've been screaming I'm, I mean, among many rooftop. others, but I definitely cast her as Maggette. I've been screaming about this from yeah. the rooftops. Yeah, I'm so excited. Yeah. I think she's just fucking awesome. I, I'm truly nervous for, I guess it probably won't be next year based on timing, but 2026 yeah. Grinwell Cup. I'm ready. And I would mm -hmm. like to see at that point a Magedian and Lanfear showdown. And we will see who comes mm -hmm. out on top. Because this this year, like, Hard I mean, Nynaeve, Lanfear. Nynaeve is what got me into the Grinwell Cup, like, in an well, yes. unapologetically fanatic way. I, um, I, that was welcome. when, yes, that was when we yeah. left Brie into this yeah. whole madness. And we said, Brie, we need, we need your 30,000 followers. <laughs> yes, immediately. <laughs> we, ride, immediately. we ride for Nynaeve at dawn. I yes. remember this vividly. Will she, will she ride will alone she ride, is what we will said. Will she ride alone? <laughs> I remember this so vividly and <laughs> yeah. like, I mean, that's the beginning of so many of my friendships with all of you. It was incredible and also so unhinged and <laughs> so unhinged, but I, I could not, because this was the year of land and I did sit there watching season two and I turned to Gus and I was like, listen, show goggles aside, like I can't control how people think when they vote and what they think mm. of. And I think this is land fears to lose this year. Yeah, like it's, it. I mean, I, and I, I purposely didn't put her in here as Sindane, even though mm -hmm. that's typically what I would have done because I was like, I just, I can't ignore that this is the year of Lanfear and yeah, people are like yeah, clamoring yeah. for Lanfear to be in the cup, even though she yeah. is dead technically and Sindane lives. So Sindane is just mm -hmm. not as hot as Lanfear and we can all acknowledge that even though they're the same person because Sindane yeah. is like sad and that's uh, <laughs> not as hot. Um, so yeah, but I turned to Gus, I was like, so Lanfear's maybe gonna win like i, I yeah. but i don't want her to walk there so that's why you put her up against my girl is that what you did listen you'll listen see you. next <laughs> round also i'll 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 preview what tomorrow's <laughs> tomorrow's bracket's gonna be for those of you who did not guess based on who's mm -hmm. still left lanfear versus Ludra is tomorrow Ooh. Uh, yeah, like, it's going to be It's going to be laughing. It's going to be like, What joy you have in your, like, the glee when you shatter people. Like, I'm just thinking of Brian the Gleeman right now. Mm. Looking at this, this is basically Matt Hatch v. Brian. Tomorrow. Right. Brian is a ride or die, like a Ludra till death. And then we've got <laughs> Lanfear. And this is it's going to be Pizza, Pizza Gate. Gate. 
all over, over again. again. It's Pizzagate. What's what? Damn what's it. Pizzagate? You don't oh know about God. Pizzagate? No. Uh, yeah. What happened? Well, you see, there was Comet. The no, I'm totally kidding. <laughs> Please continue. <laughs> It happened once upon a con years and years mm. ago and the boys ordered pizza and um, basically they came down to two two perspectives. They allegedly resolved it last year at, at WatCon, but it came down to did Matt eat Brian's pizza? Oh. And mm. Matt had said, well, I paid for the pizza, so it was all mine. Or... Does Brian owe, I think, does Brian owe Matt money Matt, yeah. for the pizza that Just Matt me. ended up eating? Like, was it Matt's pizza to begin with all along? So they resolved this last year at WatCon by buying everybody pizza. Mm -hmm. And it has been put to rest. But this has been their feud longstanding of well over a decade. Oh, I saw the pizza. I just thought mm -hmm. that was like a mm -hmm. thing people do. Like, no. I, oh, okay. So this was an end to a feud. This was an end yeah. to a feud. To a... And oh. I think tomorrow you start the new feud. Like, I'm actually tempted. Mm -hmm. This might be what makes me text Matt Hatch and say, like, mm -hmm. you need. That like, comes I know you're out coming, of retirement. I know you're coming <laughs> yes. back in July, but, like, let me be so clear. It's you're Lander needed. It's via Ludra tomorrow. Yeah. What are you going to do? Mm -hmm. I mean, what it's true. And uh, Matt Hatch has been vocally. A pro Grinwall Cup, so that yeah. and, and very vocally pro Landfear. So maybe oh. <laughs> that would be funny. I would be down. Hello, Mr. Grendel. He has returned from hockey. I hope hockey was good. I hope you did good <laughs> hockey. Did the but, puck go? Did the puck go? <laughs> but yeah, I think I mean Landfear. No question. Uh, uh, I mean, and now you all are just caught up. See that they. The thing is, yeah, there was question hot. And then the show went, uh, like, the answer is yes. Like, if you ask me the books, it's like, no, there is big question. I don't know. The books keep saying yes, and I don't know if I agree. And then the show was like, no, yes. She's very hot. Look how competent. I mean, here's the thing. Honestly, we have to get rid of the show from our thoughts because I know, they're it's all so hard. hot. Yeah. And they're all hot. Oh, like, I'm not even talking about the actress. We had an here. impasse here. Yeah. I'm not even talking about I'm... the actress, though. Like, her character is hot. Her character is hot. Her Listen, is hot. she's always been hot, but, like, she's better hot. In the, <laughs> in, the in the book, she's, in the, especially when she's Celine, she's not hot to me in the books. She's oh, you know, Celine is annoying, but it's mostly annoying that the boys don't see through the ploy. Yeah. I, okay, yeah. My is sister, it annoying or is it hilarious? It's both. My sister, my sister read The Great Hunt after watching season two, and she totally forgot that like Celine was Lanfear. Like she totally forgot her name when she was the innkeeper. So she just kept sending me messages like, "Who is this Celine bitch? I don't like her. She's awful. I hate her. Why is she so annoying? Why won't Rand just leave her alone? What like she's just she hated her so much. She's yeah. Mm. It's and listen, every outfit Natasha wore was amazing. Like the costume department really just, yeah, put they it all heard, out there. They heard mm -hmm. camp, and they embraced. Oh, it. they set yeah. up whole tent trailers mm -hmm. for an. Attack. I just, yeah, I feel like Landfear. Yeah, it's it's her year. I think, I'd be yeah. surprised I if she doesn't it. win, but I just didn't want it to be easy. I didn't want it so to you, be like so. You knocked so you everybody. knocked my girl out specific. You like you. Here's the thing. <laughs> You, I did you think did of you all. Yeah. When I did this, and I did know <laughs> that I was going to get some flack. Yeah. And I you, you uh, did, it on, yeah. did it anyway. At least, at least I know Mostly you did it on I purpose. Thought it would be I funny. Just, <laughs> I, I mean, actually feel I feel a little bit of comfort in knowing that she was intentionally knocked off of the podium. <laughs> uh, not intentionally knocked off because I thought there was definitely a chance that the naive stands could take, like, could could rise. It's happened before. It well, has. Unfortunately, oh, yes. they've been buckled by show goggles. Yes. Well, yes. Because we cannot rise when we're also combating our own feelings. Yeah. About I, I, what we've just seen and about the character yeah. that maybe we misrep, like we slept on, misunderstood for all this time. Yeah. I I don't know. I cannot speak for all naive stands. Obviously, I am a one person. I am not the, the the spokesperson for the naive stands. I 
do not when I think about Nynaeve, I don't I I don't I, this will come as a shock to many people. I don't have the hots for Nynaeve as a character. To me, she is the sibling character. So yeah. when it comes to like riding for her in a hotness panel, the reason I rode so hard for her in that first year was because of the Min stands being like, and literally in the comments, Min is best girl, Min is best girl. And I was just like, well, fuck that shit. No, not today. <laughs> like, not, not today, today. motherfucker. You're going to no. see the real best girl. <laughs> yeah. You know, coming. Yeah. But I mean, like when it comes to a hotness poll, I'm like, well, I would like Dynaeve to win because I think it would be good for her confidence. But like, Here's That's the, thing. the reason I want her to win. It's With like... the feminist breakdown document that we're doing for the, the panel, right, like right. Mo like a shocking amount of the moments that I'm pointing to as the good are mm -hmm. naive moments. Well, a nice. like an unbelievable amount. Well, like I, where mm. I was like, I know that like I love Nynaeve as a character, and I know, yeah. and I li listen. I never put people against people. I don't think have a chance. It's very rare yeah. that I put a character in the cup where I'm like they don't have any chance again. Mm. And, you know, because it's not interesting brackets. Yeah, otherwise. of course, of course, yeah, yeah right. Yeah. I mean, the only people I don't think have a chance are like loyal, and they they're introduced at the beginning. Mm. But, you know, I mean, I, I always try to put at least two people in those four that I think actually would make a really interesting fight. Yeah, yeah. And Lanfear, I was like, I don't want her to just walk through the yeah. whole thing and just, like, go through everybody, like, tissue paper. And, like, you know, I my my ma machinations go to hell all the time. Like, I didn't think Fayil would beat more gays. I didn't mm. think, you know, I didn't think Elaine would beat Rourke shows my taste is di divergent yeah. from the fandoms like my taste sometimes is divergent from the fandoms and so even my plans kind of go awry but i thought maybe night even lanfear would end up here but they could have mm -hmm. been knocked off at any time also yeah things happen the grinwell cup is live you know the things cup, happen the cup, Shit happen. The cup cups is his cups the stands yeah. show up for whoever and all of a sudden they're <laughs> taking like the lead by a ton and it's like jesus christ i thought this would be more of a fight i thought this would be more of a debate but mm. okay i guess this year so and so is really popular out of nowhere but yeah with i did think they'd end up together and i thought i had a chance i mean she did yeah, the breaking block scene was hot mm. the um the uh i uh, 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 the eagle, the red eagle flies for whatever or whatever she said. The golden she crane, like, the crane. golden whatever. crane. There's a lot of birds <laughs> with colors. The golden crane <laughs> flies for Malkir or whatever. Will he fly mm. alone or all that stuff? I felt like I felt like that had just recently happened. So I thought mm -hmm. maybe you know she had a chance. Unfortunately, Lanfear did win this. Yeah. Um, I'm sorry. I know and, and they, that hurts. We knew. It, it hurts and yet it doesn't because I honestly don't think most people who love Nynaeve love her like as, oh my God, she's so hot. We love her as like, that's my big sister. Yeah. Like that's the feeling that I think most of us have. Yeah. I, I mean, yeah. it's clearly still, it was actually really close. I mean, okay, if she's going to lose, close? I'm fine yeah. with her losing to Landry. Yeah, she, sure. And that was kind of the consensus is people are like, I mean, if she's going to lose, yeah, yeah, losing this, to Landry yeah. is going out with honor, right? Like right. it's not like she went out to somebody random it's like yeah yeah and i thought you know i i did genuinely think there was a possibility and frankly lanfear only got 54.2 percent of the vote so 90 actually did okay. do really well All so right. i'm like you know if it's any consolation in a year of lanfear 90 still did incredibly did well really against know. her okay. so i don't think i was wrong putting them together no it was a good it was a fair matchup i just I would like, again, it's weird because I know she's not real. It's what you were talking about with Lizelle. I want her to win because I think she needs it like, to realize. Like, I want her to win for her confidence. I do think though... that it's a matter of time. I think yeah. she and Lan, she, Lan, Aludra, and Liana all do so consistently well at the cup. Like some people, yeah. it's like some years they do really well and other years they don't. And, mm. you know, it's like, like Gaul and Fayil uh have never done well and suddenly they're in the semis right which yeah. i'm like damn okay like i guess there someone had a conversation this year that really sparked people's interest or something happened because yeah, all yeah. of a sudden they're doing better than they ever have ever in the history of the cup which mm -hmm. gus is delighted by because he loves golf um yeah, yes. but i think you know i think it's interesting <laughs> yeah, to see people up against different people but i think it's a matter of time for 90 because she did, always mm -hmm. does well in the cup. Mm -hmm. She always makes it to at least the quarterfinals. 
I so think like, we're gonna need to wait yeah. for some big moments in the show for people to like. Yeah, and like if, if we're talking about, board. yeah, the year of landfear. Like this was not the year of Nynaeve in the show for sure. Like this, this was, was the, the year, year of Nynaeve's trauma. Yes, Nynaeve's exactly. struggling. Yeah, yeah. Nynaeve was struggling mm-hmm. this year. Though I feel like the arches, you know, I've, and she's had the like a blazing sun moment and yeah. Like all of she's those had, were. She's had she's had big moments, but it's she's also, had moments. It's, but... it's not like we've been sleeping on Nynaeve, but like this is this is very much like her growth begins now. Because yeah, like the, been, yeah, definitely. Yeah, like the arches down. were fantastic, but if you like watch that sh- that episode, like episode three, we're like, wow, Nynaeve's hot. I'd be like, that it, it was <laughs> why more like, ooh, ooh, that's a lot to unpack, yeah. girl. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I hope yeah. you're okay. That yeah. does not a hot make. The resilience yeah. after the fact does a hot make. Yes, but like, yeah. and by resilience, I don't mean like stuffing it all down and you know, pretending it didn't no. happen. But and being hard, being, being addressing hard. your trauma <laughs> and learning how to like build a life around it is definitely mm-hmm. important. So we get, and that was our final round. Uh, you know, the the quarterfinals we had Land versus Elaine. We won't talk about these. We'll talk about these next week. But Fayil versus mm-hmm. Egwene. Uh, Gaul versus Liana is going on right now. And tomorrow we will have Lanfear versus Aludra. Oh, uh, boy. These, the quarterfinals have all been wildly close. Okay. Um, like, I mean, Fayol versus Egwene, first of all, did not go the way I thought it was going to. And yeah. also uh, was wildly close. I, honestly, we've had votes this year where like three votes made, made a difference. So That's, your vote yeah. does matter. And it was amazing to watch. This has been a really <laughs> exciting year. Thank you, everybody who's voting and being a part of this, because this is my favorite thing. Uh, I need to double check okay. and make sure I voted today, because I am like, yeah. I'm now anxious with all of these matchups. Uh, who's coming on next week to debrief? The oh, quarters? you know what? Let me double check. Hmm. My brain fog has been so bad lately, so I'm forgetting things. But I have the wrong name down for this because they've already done it. So maybe no one. Shoot, I need to figure something out. Hmm. Uh, hmm. Someone. I need to figure out who's coming on next week. (laughs) There you go. (laughs) Because this is going to be a good one. Maybe Gus can look up. Good one. Yeah, it's going to be a real good one. So, yeah, we'll do quarterfinals <laughs> and probably semifinals next week. Or no, we'll do quarterfinals next week and the following. No. Yeah, we'll do quarterfinals and semifinals next week and then we'll have our winner. We're almost okay. done with March. Holy. Yay. Holy moly. All right. Well, thank you all so much for. Yes. I know I've pay- I know I've asked somebody. I just have to like go back in my like email. <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah. Because I wrote the wrong name down, and I was like, they already went. But I had to do some <laughs> shifting, and I think I just didn't shift fully. So we'll find <laughs> out. But anyway, y'all are so great. Thank you so much for coming on and being a part of this. This has been so much fun. Thanks for having us. This is my favorite part of like every new year is just gearing up for Grinwell. And it's, it's, uh, it's I I literally will do it over Christmas. I get so excited. I start like (laughs) doing brackets over Christmas because I'm just like, you know, I'm starting to think about it and get all excited because it's just, it's such a silly, goofy, dumb thing. And I love silly, goofy, dumb things. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Thank you all so much. And thank you for spending so much of your evening with me. It's always a delight to see you both and you're the best. Love you. Thank you. I love. (laughs) Bye, everybody. Bye, Bye, friends. See you next week. Yeah. Oh, she just left. Bye, pal. Bye. Bye. We're we're still live. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) We we can't end it. Allie has to end it. You have you have to end the stream, Alex. I know I fucked up. So you have to end the stream. Yes. I, this is, would you believe this is the second time in a row I've done this? I did this last week too. I'm 
much. Listen, I love just leave studio really should end everything. Anything. That's my opinion. <laughs> leave studio should end everything. But I guess it makes sense for them not. I, okay, fine. It makes sense for that not to be the case. But at the same time, if oh I had. God, I was not ready for an encore. <laughs> <laughs> I was I was just about to get up and start cleaning this shit storm uh, my daughter has I was like going to send you, I to send you a message be like, Ali, Ali, you got to turn it off. I realized that the minute I did it, the minute I did it, I was like, fuck, I did it again. <laughs> this is the second time in a row. Oh, my brain is just like not working. Lately. We're figuring out why. Anyway. <laughs> okay. Good night. Try Thank it. Wow. There's encore. Yes. I'm clicking the right button. Watch. <laughs> okay. There we go.